trips were terrible. Yeah, true. It talk about unhealthy behavior. Like <laughs> let's stay up for twenty four hours and drive. Yeah, we're like getting, we got to the hotel room. We got to the hotel at seven. Check ins at eleven. So we gotta stay awake for four more fucking hours. Yeah, remember in New York when we went up that one time oh, and oh, Travis oh. wasn't there. Oh no, he wasn't answering his phone. He was there. <laughs> But we, we also arrived at fucking 5 o'clock or 4.30 in the morning. And check, that bus had to be going 130 miles an hour. But the best part about it was we got kicked out of Grand Central Station. Like, yeah, three we, hoodlums. We got there, and we were just trying to sit down the stairs, just trying to rest, and yeah. What Kids contest was this? New York. This was not a contest. <laughs> <laughs> this was not a contest. We were visiting um, Travis. I can't remember his last name. He's a YouTuber now, and he has he's like a FNG. director of finance. Finance. Not FNG, no. no, no oh, not FNG. So kite? No, no, no. Not no, kite. No. no. It was, it was Travis Rice, that's not you know the worst part is like I follow him on Instagram. Like he's a nice guy. But FNG. I cannot think of his name. No, I don't think it's FNG. FNG is like a videographer. Andrew Robinson. Yeah. Travis, he like travels around the country with his wife yeah, and a man. Yeah. What's his? God, it's on I the. Can't is it his Owen? Last name. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yep. His dad was a doctor, and he was going to NYU. <laughs> it's like right on the tip of my tongue. Like, I don't know what this guy's name is. That'd be just like a Joe Rogan podcast. I got the computer right here. <laughs> Did you just say Joe <laughs> Jamie, Rogan? pull it up. <laughs> Chucky, pull it up for us. <laughs> Charles. Anything but Charlie. You can pick Chucky. That's a murderous doll. You know, my, my rap name is Chalkline Chuck. Chalkline <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my <Fuck>. god. <laughs> Charles. The mics aren't directional. It's not gonna pick up anything. I'm just gonna hear sound you <laughs> like God damn it, Chuck. <laughs> Alright, well, in the meantime, I don't know what Chuck is doing, but what's up everyone? This is episode whatever of the goods. I don't I don't really know what episode we're on, but uh this is my guest. We've been friends for damn near 20 years probably not not near like 17 years 16 years it's been like 17 years, 2005 dude. so yeah like 17 years wow dude, it's been a long time man national 5a champion sam scott i love i always intro the episodes like that and then pause as if there's gonna be some sort of applause i should put in like a seinfeld not a laugh but like <laughs> a gasp <Yes. laughs> like someone's dog just got hit by a car or something <laughs> what are you looking up chuck I'm just trying to figure out how long that fucking walk was. Oh. We're going to walk that happened like Everything 10 years ago. That I was going to say, yeah. It was probably like two miles and you're like, ah, oh, it's a hundred blocks. Yeah, but we had like not slow. You literally <laughs> walked two miles for fun today <laughs> after eating a pound and a half of barbecue. And he's like, oh. But it's in like the city. We're a bunch of like crazy richmonders in like the down like downtown new york like what do we know what year is this uh 2011 oh okay so you guys didn't go to new york for any of the yayo nation contests i did um was your mom with you or something or no 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 so i went with ed dude i was i can't believe i was 15 and my mom let me go to new york alone but ed there ed is a good uh chaperone at upon it we stayed at like the pod (laughs) like the pod hotel and it was like me, I want to say it was like Henry Dean or something. Is that like a hostel where they're just all the pods? Six and... people. Brandon, uh, Brandon Jackson was in there. Like it was You guys like, are all in one room? Or... Yeah. So That's kind of cool, though. I think the Mac ox- the max occupancy was like two people. And we <laughs> shoved like, like six in there. <laughs> and we're like, we're not small dudes. Uh, like, Brandon's not a small guy. And yeah, that's like, a yeah, crew. And neither there. was Ed at the time, either. <laughs> no. I remember... Ed posting on Dot at the time about his diet, and he's like, for lunch today, I had a bag of Frito scoops and a container of cheese, and I was like, Jesus Christ, being an adult sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, we get in that hotel room, and it's, yeah, I think two people slept on the floor? I don't know. I don't know how we did it. Jesus it was It was Christ. a bad idea, and like my first experience in New York was like, let's go back to this pod hotel. And take like a it was uh and it was like communal showers. It was just a bad idea. We all stayed at the Millennium Hilton, which was like the cool hotel uh, right across the street from the World Trade Center. And Kia was just like drunk as hell and like running everything he could through the coffee pot and then throwing it out the window. What? We had a thirty floor room, <laughs> and the window would open like two feet or so, and he would just like we we he had like ten double cheeseburgers from McDonald's. Oh, he ran them all through the coffee machine and made like this 
milk slurry and then just dumped it out the window oh my God. and then just like ripped the bible into a hundred pieces threw what? it out the window and he just had a shirt on that just said team iran on it what? <laughs> and this was like what 2007 yeah, not I very long after 9 11 he just rocking around new york in a Dude. team iran shirt no, it was not that fun at the pod hotel. It was and then, it like was miserable. Walking up to the hotel, he was like going up to the World Trade Center uh memorial and doing like the X Pac. <laughs> <laughs> so <good. laughs> It's like, man, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> good times. What an intro to New York. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like New York, New York is York. great. Yeah, I was like, I can't believe this shit. New York is awesome. What a start. <laughs> what yeah. a good story did, to start. When did you start yo-yoing, Sam? Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, 2003-ish. Uh, it was like 2003, 2004. So some kid, uh, TJ Jones. I, I did competitive very music. very Danville, uh, Virginia dude, name, fuck, dude, TJ yeah. Jones. <laughs> dude, man, come on. Uh, he's uh, Theus. He goes by Theus now, but uh, he was, we were in like this percussion group together. So I did like world-class percussion oh yeah i forgot that you were a band kid yeah, <sighs> yeah. me too i mean could you get any worse like yeah yeah band nerds like i had a traumatic <laughs> childhood i'm just kidding um, traumatic. it wasn't it wasn't people the best touched way. me <laughs> uh, i've been judged my whole life it's okay so we ended up it was off season and he was like i'm gonna go bring this show yeah and i don't even remember what it was it may have been like you guys were like, like 13 or 14 at the time so so i was 13 i think he was 16 oh, okay so he was like three years old i mean i think Damn. he graduated two years away that's um, cool that he's chilling yeah. with you well like <laughs> putting you band, on game like, as a 13 year old so i was in ninth grade i think he was like in 11th um and he brought a yo-yo to school and just kind of like kick-started it uh i did yo-yo back in the boom so it was like a brain uh, right. i think like the first trap he's ever hit was like on a brain um Damn. yeah I, skinny I, boy i'm going to old school uh and then it just kind of got started and he kept with it. He got another kid into it, Michael, um, who all don't yo-yo today. Uh, I think Michael has like six kids, like good for him. Um, and T, uh, and, uh, TJ still lives in like North Carolina. I think he still like has like a bunch of old school yo-yos, like, like Hitman. Like, That's sick. I know. It's like he, they were probably in his box closet, like not cracked. There's some random people that are on the BST yeah. selling their old collections now. And it's so... Jake Bullock, like on a monthly basis, will vent to me. He's like, "Man, I have, I've probably broken like ten thousand dollars worth oh, of yo-yo dude. jams and Dunkins." And I'm like, "Dude, you had fun with them when you were a kid. Like, don't trip on that. Like, remember throw like, some more money in your four hundred one k." Remember, like, when all the yo-yo kids had like boxes of rims of like yeah. old like Hitman that had just cracked and I died. I still have a box of that shit. <laughs> mod fodder. I'm oh. like, one day I'll do something with it. Like, and then just sit there and you move it from like yo-yos apartment to now apartment. are hard. Like, uh, the plastic yo-yo I make, the first base, I put an Element X ring in one one time, and it was just like, yeah, fucking, it was so funny because I made it and I'm like, this is a piece of shit. It was like <laughs> 75 grams vibrated to hell. But like every 16 year old kid that was like, hanging oh, out with me at the time was like, what is this? And I was like, yeah. they're like, you made this? And I'm like, yeah, like people used to do this all. This is how you had to yeah. make a yo-yo back in the day to or, be able to play with it. Who <laughs> was it who took like Exodus rooms and put them on like a free Mar- Was it Mark? Uh, Mark Mott, yeah, yeah. And then um, Justin Weber, remember his, first of all, his Hyper Warp Heavy Wings played great. I don't give For a shit. For the time, yeah. I don't give a shit what anybody says. They played spectacular. <laughs> he like put O-rings in. It was, what was it, like a worn friction biscuit? Yeah. Completely worn off. They played spectacular. Um, it was on par with like Ed's no jive setups where he's uh, like, I have two O rings in one side, a brand new, fresh. This one's 90 short durometer, that one's 78 short. <laughs> like, oh, cool. Like, remember when like you had to yo yo and it was a science to make yo yo good? Yeah. And now it's just like you pull up any yo yo and like you're guaranteed to be great with it. Like, now everyone just yo-yo. argues about like string or pads or like the bearings and they're like, I don't know why this one's good, but it's good. And then I spin it and I'm like, no, oh, it's pretty well made. It's got a good, con- nice concentricity. It's well made versus is like every other bearing that has zero cuts it's yes. like i don't give a shit they're trying to make it as fast as possible like of course this oh, one's gonna feel a, n- a little bit nicer like yeah it was like used to be hard and like remember the bearing and like the hyper hyper wing so anyways I-, I ended up getting uh there was this shop in eden north carolina so like one day after school we went to eden north carolina because like we heard they had yo-yos they had 
How Builder. far was his drive? Uh, it's like 45 minutes. And That's we're not like, so bad, he's, but. he's 16, just got his license. And I'm like 13. I don't have a license. Like, I'm just some dumb kid hanging out with like, you know, like band geeks. But like, we're, we're all friends. Down for an adventure yeah, when you're that young. Yeah. We go to the shop and it's Eden, North Carolina is a shithole. Um, I think they have like shout the out to North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina is great. Iconic, everyone out there. I see Ed post pictures of North Carolina, and I'm like, oh, I'd love to live there. It looks like a nice place, Raleigh. Well, Ed has such a, like lives. a cool life. Like, right? Yeah. I, I look at Ed as like like the quintessential of like what I want to do with my life, but I can't do it. Like, I used no to way. love talking to Ed when I was a kid, and he would like try to avoid telling me his background. Yeah. He'd be like, I just want everyone to succeed and do well, and you're so smart, and like you have such uh, a bright future. I'd be like, what do you do, Ed? Like, oh, I'm a teacher, but my, my wife's a doctor. Like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> like, like, that's Ed's really awesome, great, though. Oh, yeah. dude. I, I used to ask, like, where'd you go to college? Like, oh, Boston University. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, and I'm like, oh, like, your wife go there, too? Like, oh, she went to Harvard. <laughs> like, oh, all right, shit, cool. Isn't your wife a doctor? Yeah, your wife went to Harvard Medical School? Yeah, he's like, doesn't tell, like, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm like, you what? Don't pry it, man. He just, like, let his shit on the internet. Yeah. Uh, so, we went to North Carolina. They had uh, bumblebees, like, and they were men in package, and I think they were already old at the point. I was gonna right? say, yeah. Um, everything that had, like, you said this cork, was 03 or 04. Yes, yeah, so they were already, and they were still mint in package, but everything had, like, the cork biscuit, um, uh, the cork friction. Uh, what is it called? I can't remember what they're called. Brake pads. Brake pads. <clears throat> Whatever they're called. BPT, um, brake pad technology. So we bought, and he had, like, a high warp heavy wing, and I, I copped it. I was like, that's the one that I How wanted. much was it? 15 bucks dude 15 there you go. it was it wasn't much i mean i think at the time like, sometimes you'd get like sodomized for yeah. those yo-yos that you'd, you'd pay like 30 35 dollars for a raider a guy in like north carolina like eden north carolina really knew what he had yeah i mean he, yeah i i think we met the owner and he He's was like, like yo-yos cool. are over if anyone wants these like uh just take them the, the boom's over like i got this old stock. especially a bumblebee if it was a pro yo bumblebee it would have been like 30 bucks retail $40 during the boom or whatever I think combined I think we've spent 50 bucks and walked out with like 30 yo-yos I mean because like (laughs) most of it was trash Um, so that's when it kind of all started and like I learned from Ken's world on a string you like read the diagrams and break down. How was I supposed to learn like yeah it was bad at the time yeah well like I lived in like such a BFE area like I didn't get I mean we had like internet but it wasn't high speed yeah for the longest time so like the whole world of like the internet learning tricks i didn't get into it like that i learned from pictures and having to download the video on ken's world on a string which he had videos don't know how he posted them don't know how he hosted them like looking back i've never downloaded a video from ken's world on a string it's incredible like when you think about it like the technology at the time these kids nowadays don't know nothing about save target as (laughs) well like the struggle of learning things you it's not you can't click on a youtube video like you're right save target as like it's something that these kids like don't understand. That's why I and asked you how far you drove to that hobby shop because like there's probably yo yoers within an hour and a half drive of where we are right now that we've never met, have yep. collections of thousands of dollars. There's a guy in Philly that's like that, that I've never met and like now he has a kid, so he'll probably never come. He came to like <laughs> MAR one year, but I was running the contest, so I didn't get a chance to meet him and it's just like Man, back in the day, like you would have met every person within a hundred mile radius yep. of you that yo yoed. And it's like, yo, you're down to chill on the weekends? Like, bet we're gonna pull up like one weekend a month to hang out, you know? Like I drove two hours to the North Carolina meets just to hang out with Ed. Probably like on the like monthly or whatever uh, they were. Once every other two weeks. So by we went to a coffee shop and I would and then there was like I remember my parents I, you know what like the dopamine and high you got from that though is probably like insane like it's well, probably like you know i didn't know any yo yoers getting like, like a compliment from your boss at work now you're just like <sighs> oh i'm doing a good job like that's how you feel driving to the yo-yo meet when you're was, 15 like oh this is so lit i can't wait to hang out with everyone I, I got there and like i remember like the first time i went i think my mom went with me and then like all of a sudden i could drive and she's like oh you should go but i would drive two hours to those meets and like i don't think I don't think that happens anymore. I'm not sure. Like we've been talking about it's it very camera. rare, dude. And like, and who? people don't want to sacrifice. Like I, there, I run a a skill toy group for the Philly, like skill toy, whoever wants to take part in it. And there's multiple people in there, and they all want. Like there's a guy who lives out like 
in the suburban area of Philly, but it's like literally an hour away from the city. And he's like, oh, like if we could do it somewhere out here, that'd be great. And then like every, no one in the city has a car, like every like, yeah. except for me, like every other yoga player doesn't have a car. They think I'm fucking crazy because I have a car. There's a guy like in West Philly. His name is Chris Demi. He's a programmer, too. Like he makes these 3D counter rates. If you see any 3D printed counter rates, he's probably he's fucking right them. or he's like taught the person who's making them. Christy Brown or like a lot of other people. He's like the OG for that shit. But uh. Dude, he rides his. He may have a car, but like he rides his bike everywhere, and it like he he met us like me and another yo-yo player during the pandemic. He rode his bike like twenty miles or something to hang out with us, and I was just like, "What the fuck?" And he's like, "Oh, I just do that on the regular." And I'm like, "Jesus, well, Christ, you and Danny like, were coming down to Virginia meets." Yeah, like, in, but like in Virginia Beach, like but we were hungry, like you said, and we like wanted to meet people, and it was yeah. like there's nothing going on in Delaware, you know, well, like what is gonna keep me in Delaware? I think <laughs> you were closer to that. I think it was like a four hour, three hour drive for you. It was like three and a half, four it hours. It was four and a half for me to get to those meets. Damn, that's and wild. I would do it like yeah. just because like I didn't know of another way to learn. Like internet sucked. Like oh, at that time, like I guess YouTube really was coming out, but like I wasn't getting better, and like. Like, the one thing, I, like, I do, I have some regrets about, like, how I got into yayoing, like, and, and, like, how serious I took competitions a little bit. Like, I wish I didn't. Eh. Part of me wishes I didn't. But, it was like, a good time to do it. I mean. It was fun. <laughs> I really hate being bad at stuff, and I'm not a quick learner. <laughs> so, like, that's, like, the worst combination for anything in life. So, like, I always have to try really hard. So, like, I felt like I had to go. Yo-yo is perfect for that, though, because yeah. there's, like, a constant testing of yeah. your own skill and, like chuck and i have been like learning how to grow weed and stuff the last yeah. couple of years and it's just like it's the hardest skill to learn because there's like zero bounce back you know mm -hmm. what i mean like the yo-yo if you mess up like you just roll it back up and try yeah. again if you mess up a plant you gotta start a whole month Either months that, long like, i mean yeah marijuana yeah that's it. Talk closer to the mic. I'm trying to think. Like, uh, yeah. Growing versus yo-yoing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, plants can bounce back. They're pretty strong and resilient, but at the same point, like, it's harder to learn. Like, you got to forecast. Isn't every, every, I mean, maybe every yo-yo is different, but not to the point where you're gonna need to. It doesn't like that strength. And you can be reactionary, you know? like, yeah, yo-yoing. Yeah, is like, and I'm gonna get really metaphorical now. Yo-yoing is like the least, uh, like, they don't have any foresight or like, oh, we're gonna forecast like what's gonna happen a couple years now. Or let's work toward this. It's like, yeah. oh man, this guy fucked up a lot and did really well in the contest. We should make a rule so that doesn't happen again. Well, Marcus was it Marcus? <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I love Marcus. That's not a diss to Marcus yeah. or anything, but it's just like perfect example of like yo-yoing is reactionary. Like. Yeah. Oh, like we're the two. This is getting too out of hand. Like it's the too egregious. Broken, we should fix it. Yeah. And that's happened. God, um, since we've been yo-yoing, how that's much? Why they stopped doing compulsories? Like people I, will get multiple fifties per year, and it's like, how are people getting perfect? Forty-four every the, year. All the, everybody got forty-four one year, and they and there's people who got forty-four in compulsories who didn't make finals because everybody got fifties. And I was like, okay, yeah. I, I can see why that system's broken. But yeah, you're right. It happened, what, three years later? They had compulsories for like three more years after that happened. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's finally fixing it. But like, I, the competition scene is just, I don't know. It was it was kind of like my like drug, like, you know, like into like the scene of like, how do I get better? Yeah. So, like, I really appreciate it for that. But like, I don't know. Like, it's no different than being like karate or like yeah. you're in Little League baseball or something. And it's like the games have you yeah. give you something to look forward to. If anything, I feel like kids who yo-yo maybe are more prepared to handle loss or like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it really fucks up their teamwork <laughs> elements because they, they're so used to being independent yeah. and working solo. So like, but. I, I guess that came from like, I hate to say cliche, like, like from like my music background of learning that and like learning skills. Like I took yo-yoing the same like direction so like i did competitions with band i'm gonna do competitions with yo-yoing yeah and like probably not the healthiest way to do it but it did prepare me for like real world shit like jobs it's kind of competitive like, yeah, yeah. as much as like anybody likes to lie to you and say oh if you're really good at something you get a job it's not true like <laughs> i'm sorry it's a it's a load of crap like i'm not trying to break anybody's the world heart. sucks kid <laughs> like, it, it's, it's a different grind and like yo-yoing kind of prepared me for it like i owe a lot to yo-yoing 
Um, it's a good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah like because so many people who are unsuccessful look at it exactly yeah. the opposite, where they're like, "Yo, I went fucked up my life. Yeah. Like, I didn't go anywhere." And it's like, no, like you could have tapped out at any time. You could have decided to go a different direction. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's go ahead. You're, you're ready. Sorry. No, no, no. I mean, like, if I didn't have yo-yoing, like. I'm not going to say, like, I would have been a piece of shit, but I probably would have been a piece of shit. Like, just wouldn't have I had something up, to focus on. Well, yeah. like, even more than that, like, I owe it more than that because, like, I grew up in a bubble. I talk, talk, We talked about this earlier. Yeah. Like, I grew up in a bubble where, like, everybody had certain things and everybody was super, you know, like, successful-ish. Like, they were going to college and all that stuff. And, like, I didn't know struggle existed. And then I started yo-yoing. And I met, like, this fucking community of people, like, who had struggle. No, yeah. And it sounds stupid, but, like... No, no, I it's... didn't know a world existed outside of, like, BFE Virginia and Southern yeah. Virginia. Like, and I thought that was my world. And, like, I owe yo-yoing a lot to that, like, to my life. Like, That's right, that. yeah. And that sounds, like, stupid, but, like, I met cool people. I met people <clears throat> with, like, different struggles. Like, I met people who had mental health issues. Didn't know what that was growing up. Yeah. Like, I just didn't know. And yo-yoing really, like, it gave me that. It was, like, the outlet for me. Because, like, I went band. was it all in town. Like, I wasn't a country boy per se. But, like, you could consider me that. You wanted to get out of that, though. I didn't you know what like I mean? it. I yeah. didn't like or it. Or at I least get exposed out. to more, yeah. Well, like, not many people from my town end up kind of having the same belief structure I do. And I, I, it's like yo-yoing help. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I'd hate to say, like, it's bigger than just a toy, but, like, it kind of is. Just like, like I, you said, you exposed more. It's def- yeah. That's a great quote, bigger than a toy. <laughs> yo-yoing, bigger it's, than a toy. It is, though, because it's community. It's, yeah. I don't and know. I don't like, know if that's, like, lost anymore. I, I don't hate to say, like, I'm not, like, super in yo-yos anymore. Like, I still yo-yo, but, like, it's not like I'm into, like, the forums or anything like that. Like, I do real world shit like on a day-to-day basis like i know it sounds stupid <laughs> no but, like, it's, grow up this eventually. is why i do this fucking yeah. podcast is it's you know expose that side of yo-yoers to people and it's so like cool. i i didn't know anything man like i yo yoing really taught me a lot this is it's more than just a toy I, even sounds, people who don't go as in depth with it as you have like it still teaches them a lot yeah. you know what i mean that's it's a great sentiment to have about it Dude, yeah, like I never would have gone as nearly as many places without yo-yo or done as many things as I've done now or accomplished as many things. Yeah, like we would have tapped out much earlier in yeah. life and just been like, oh, I'm just picking this regular route. And like, yeah, yeah, like I wouldn't end up in Richmond. Like, you know, I've lived in Richmond 10 years now. And honestly, like I knew Charles. I knew. G, yeah, that's I knew wild Alex, to think man. about that. You used to live in like not the boonies, but like, I live in the boonies, it was, but it was, it was developed. The but like, <laughs> it was developed, but it was the boonies. Like my y'all school, got a Chipotle my, now. I'm sure. We do. Actually, they just built it like Dang, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, but like, no, nah, dude. Like I grew up. Like, like, my high school's in, in the a cow carnage. pasture. <laughs> like my high school. My high school's in a cow pasture. It's funny because I live in a cow pasture now, but I went back to my. Well, that's roots. balling when you're an adult. <laughs> you're like, yo, look at this shit. But like, you're trying to learn long division. <laughs> G and Charles were like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. And I dropped out of I dropped out of some program at college. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go do VCU because your mom worked there. And he was like, oh, I yeah, yeah, I can hang out and do all this shit. And ended up in Richmond and like kind of taught me like a new world. So like, yeah, for sure. Like it's I'm not sure if anybody's talked about it on this show, like about yo yoing be more than just like a toy that, you know, we all met and all had a, 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 a hobby with. Like, it's really taught me that people are different and people have struggles and, like, knowing struggles is how you get through life. Yeah. So, no, it's a great sentiment. To get, like, deep on your podcast. No, deep that's deep great, man. Not many people talk about it that deep. Most people are just, it's very, like, surface level or yeah. they have so many memories of, like, contests or what's happened. Like, since you've been kind of out of it for a couple of years and you've had the time to be retrospective and, like, yeah. oh, man, this has played so much heavier of a role in my life than I remember it and... I mean, I was just like an immature little shit. I'm just going to be honest. We like, all are. We were exactly. all fucking, you act like you can't be 17 immature. <laughs> yeah. Dude, kids now, I'm, I'm going to put everyone on blast now. Oh, I was, no. It's not that bad. I was on a yo-yo trip a little over a year ago to, to summer, 20, summer 2020. We were out in Albany, upstate New York, and I was there with like Andrew Mater, Colin, uh, Zaf. Zaf is from Malaysia. Like a bunch of people. Yeah. And... Man, one or two other people were there too but uh mater got a flat tire oh, and we're no. like in the middle of the woods and like i 
know how to change a flat tire. Like I've done it plenty of times and like growing up a broke kid and then yeah. not having the money to get like a new one, you like ride on a donut occasionally, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. the case may be. So like we pull over and they're all like, I'm out of my mind. I've been day drinking all day. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, Mater's got a flat and he's on the phone with his mom. And and I'm like, what? why is he on the fucking phone with his mom? And they're like, they're trying to figure out what to do. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he's got a donut. Yeah. Like, what? Like they give you all the tools in the trunk. And they're like, I don't know if they're all, he has like a 2013 girl or something. I'm like, they're all going to be in there. Trust me. They're like brand new. Everything still has like the grease on it and shit. And I'm like, yo, like, let's just change this. And like, he had already been on the phone with AAA. And I'm like, call AAA back. Tell them not to come. I'm just going to do it real quick. They're like, you know how to do this? And I'm like, I put new brakes on my car like two months ago. And they're like, Really? And I'm like, you just watch a YouTube tutorial. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, and it was literally two and a half minutes done. You know what I mean? And they're like, this is crazy. And I'm like, just don't go over like 20 miles per hour in the woods because we're driving like literally on dirt roads through the woods. And it's like, yo. Way to put him on blast though for not trying to change a car tire. I know. It's, uh, they're, but they're kids. You know? Know. They're all 17, 18. Like Mater's the only one that knew how to drive. And like now he lives in New York City. And like, I bet he doesn't even have his no. car there, you know? So it's like Colin doesn't have a license because he grew up like not in the city but yeah. like in cleveland where like he wasn't going anywhere that like he didn't need his parents to yeah. drive him to and now that he's older he lives in philly again he can take public transit everywhere like it's life wild. lessons hey all those kids learn how to do like learn how to change a car tire yeah from the, you know, they can from code a, in three or four language. languages <laughs> 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 they can't change a car tire. i sound like get off my lawn cotton hill right now <laughs> when did we get so old like you know like we're talking about when we opened the podcast like we've been friends for 17 I know. years Bunch of older old than dudes. some of these kids are when i picked up colin from the airport for the first time and he was like 15 or 14 thinking back and it's just like holy shit like we were that age at one point but i was such an insufferable 14 or 15 year old you well, know what i mean we all right like we said it earlier I mean, yeah everyone remember... that's 14 or 15 is a dickhead <laughs> oh dude we spent so much time at your apartment with like me you and danny remember we used to play like porn when Justin and Sean Fumo would be there just make them super uncomfortable and it's Sean like Fumo, it's such a oh weird thing to do but it's like I was like 15 and a fucking weirdo like that apartment I fucking hate oh uh, was it Wilmington City that that like towed my car <laughs> talk about learning no life it was a, it was in Newcastle but yeah, yeah oh dude anyways <laughs> that was a great contest uh, good times holy shit i loved lor dude i drive so i, I, I actually it. i know it's weird like it's <laughs> mostly because of memories but like yeah it's sentimental uh, whenever i drive past and i see exit 5a and i'm like i know where the fuck i'm at like i know like it's the one place what's in the world. 5a like 202 or i don't know where i just remember or... that like going to your place it was like 5a hmm. i think or like that's four funny something. That's really funny. You could take 5A to get there. I'm sure I remember that as a kid. And I would probably think it every time. I'm like, oh, 5A, great. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Five it's my exit. <laughs> you <my exit>. <laughs> pull it. over there. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, like, I spent shit. I mean, like, John, Rob, me, you, and Danny went to MA States. What? Was that 2007? I still have the shirt at home. That's sick. It's like a gym shirt at home. But yeah. Was it 2007? I have the shirt, too. But, Yeah. I was <laughs> talking to Sam earlier about like uh, the the yo-yo circuit on the East Coast. When oh, I was dude. when I interviewed Curdy, he that's what he kind of referred to it as. He would say like every year he'd be like, "Yeah, so I was 14, and then I'd compete on the the circuit, I guess." And I used to think I'm like, "Yeah, like there'd be MAR and then PA states and all these contests What's, you could go to." How and, many contests did you go to in one year? Like I went to like one year. I went to dude, 14. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was the lot, I was yeah. the second ever AOA champion of the year. Sebi was first. I was second. And they got rid of it because they probably realized that both times I think I got second. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm like well, god damn it! They, and they didn't, wasn't it. there kind of like a scholarship to do with that too? Didn't no. you get a couple hundred bucks or something? I no, dick. I got a fucking TFL. I, no it was just the TFL's a YYL. Yeah, 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 and it came in a really cool box that I destroyed, and I have no clue where it is. But I, I think swore I there was some kind of maybe it was a, you got like a room or something. One cash. I didn't win. It anything. was just regional champions at the time. For one, I got their room paid for or whatever. I was never a fucking regional champion. For one, thanks, yeah. Tyler. God, I'm good now. Me either. Not for one, I not in my region. No, our region. Our region sucks. Yeah, Sebastian always won. Sebastian, well, we you were five. A. It was yeah. terrible to win our. It was, you okay? So. <laughs> 
I remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so first of all, the first contest I ever went to was like Virginia States in 2007. I got beat by like Tom Connolly and, and a freestyle. 2007? Division. I don't know. The first year of Virginia States. So the one that was at the mall? I didn't yeah, go that year. didn't go that year. John Rob went that year. I though. got beat by Tom Connolly and freestyle. A lot of people did. Was that the year he no, freestyled to Michael Jackson? He only beat two people, and I was one of them. The, the yo-yo circuit. The, that's the best way to put it ever. <laughs> you could drive. It was a contest a month. Right? Yeah, from basically like North Carolina to Massachusetts, damn yep. near. You could go to a contest a month. And Tennessee states, too. Like I North was, Carolina states, Tennessee yep. states, Virginia states, uh, Maryland states. God, I forgot about Mass Maryland states. states. Holy shit. Massachusetts states, MAR. Georgia. Georgia states. I never I went to that one. To that. But, yeah, that's seven. Talk about if, a you wanna go venue. The, if you want to count the whole East Coast, there's probably. 10 12 contests throughout those times like, and you would just sit there and just draw you'd go back in a weekend or like stay with the I homies never, like and that's something i never took, rent a year or a that's room something i took for granted like uh i went to indianapolis for work like this is six years ago or something like that brad collins do you know brad collins? yeah yeah he randomly started making yo-yos again recently yeah, and then well, he got into like a crazy accident and i now. don't know i great guy anyway yeah i was gonna say he's a good guy but he's has a but when you talk about people who struggle in yoga, I, <laughs> I love Brad. <laughs> Jesus. He has like subdermal, like, uh, he was crazy. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, love the guy. We're not talking to shit about him. I like him. I, <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know, like, he, randomly I showed up and he was like, when he got in yoga. And like, I didn't think about this until like that happened. I was like, there's pretty much every state where I know somebody. Yeah, dude. Who could like, hey, I'm stuck somewhere. Can you help? Can you help me out? And I didn't really realize that, but that's because I travel around and like drive 12 yeah. hours at a time to go to a contest and then come back home. Because of the industry you work in now, maybe you work with some people who travel around more, but like yo-yo players travel Dude. so much for the contest back then. And spent so much time in a car. I've been like, to probably like, I tell kids I've been to like 48 states because <laughs> I think the only states I haven't been to are like the Dakotas, Montana. I mean, like, I think the furthest one I drove to was St. Louis from Virginia, which is dumb. Don't ever do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was the stupidest thing. St. Louis from West Virginia. Coast. I didn't do the West Coast contest. I didn't want to fly out for a contest unless it was nationals. Yeah. Which even then I didn't want to fly out for nationals because it was in Chico. It's not shade on anybody. I love Chico, but it was hard. It sucked getting to it. Dude, it's an investment. It's, it's an not investment. Not even just the money of yeah. time, of effort, of like... And you got to find people to fucking do it with if you don't have a network to do it with. It was in like, fucking October. Like, I was in college, and I, I just got... Prime married. time when everyone's starting everything. High school, oh, college, whatever fuck? the case may be. <sighs> yeah, I did Most yo-yo like, players are not losers and don't have shit going on. <laughs> like, it's all... I was in college. I, I would always come back and have to take either a final or a midterm exam. And I always remember, like, landing in a plane one time. And, and I flew into Chico one time, which I didn't know you could do. Um, you took like a, a small prop plane, plane it's, yeah it's from, like a delta prop plane did you fly from plane. from sfo to chico yeah so one year i bought a ticket for danny to do that and uh him and john rob <laughs> they both did it together but john rob when he bought his ticket it was like 300 bucks and then when i bought danny's it was like seven or eight hundred but it was uh, still hilarious and they like met a porn star at the airport they like showed up to nationals and i was like oh like you guys want some weed like i got hella weed right now they're like oh no we already bought some weed and i was like what, what? are you talking about yeah and it was hilarious because john rob had a room with mark hayward at the time have you ever met mark yes. hayward mark is a great guy i love mark but like fish out of water in that scenario yep. and like this fucking porn star comes to the room to sell danny and john rob weed and i was like aren't you rooming with mark hayward right now and he's like yeah and i was like what did mark think about it? he's like he didn't say anything. He invited her to dinner. I was like, word. All right, Mark. I, hear that. I was like, did he know that she was a porn star? Was what like, year no. was this? 2010, 11. Like was one I of the last years in Chico. There. Yeah, yeah. The fuck? How did I miss this? Holy <laughs> shit. That's a great story. I flew into Chico too. I did not have that same experience. I'm pissed off now. Uh, <laughs> Cause they met her at the airport and I was like, oh, did you guys like getting anything at the airport? Chico? Cause it was just like, it's a college child, so she was doing like a scene there that week. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, you missed out on that. I'm just gonna go ahead and say you that. didn't miss out. On I just wanted to go to West Coast contests, but yo-yo players in general missed out on that contest because, like, if anyone? if anyone, 
I'm sure people who like were party animals like went out and did damage yeah. amongst the town, but like nowadays, if yo-yo contests were there, like it would be debauchery. Yes. <laughs> like Chico would be a mess. Yes. <laughs> well, considering like I mean, like one of my favorite contests, uh, like Worlds in Cleveland. Remember the outside area? How we yes. crashed it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, Not I on feel purpose. Bad for Steve, because I think they said you Steve, you gotta pay for it, right? Didn't they? What did they trash? Like the plants outside, and like there was crap everywhere. I, I remember mean, people leaving players. trash and shit. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't remember. I'm sure it was fine. Steve. I'm sure I just, it was fine. Oh well. When you bring that much money, like I don't know. I'm not talking shit on Cleveland or whatever, but it's just I like love Cleveland. they generate a lot of money for. Yeah, it's up. Where it's going to be like a million dollars or yeah. something for the city. So it's like the least two plants. Like they can comp it. It's well, least. Fair it sucks. You know. Fair I mean, enough. Like, but like. I could imagine if I was the hotel manager, I'd be pissed. Oh, yeah. That a bunch of, like, middle-aged... Well, because at that time... Dude, at that time, like... We went Everybody crazy our age... Like, we started at the same time, right? So I was, like, 13 when we started. So by that time, I was, like, what, 23, 24? So, like... We kind of learned the ways, right? I, I'd hate to say it. Like, we all kind of knew. We weren't too debaucherous outside. We were just, we were having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think, people just left shit behind. I don't think anything really got I'm broken. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same yeah. thing would happen in Orlando. People would fall asleep on plans. They would be too drunk and lean. Like, Miguel probably <laughs> caused <laughs> upwards of four figures of plan damage at the Rosen Plaza. Who was the guy? <laughs> oh, speaking of which, who was the guy who fell asleep on the stage and, like, I, I can't really put cigarettes on him. We piled chairs on him. Were you there? For was that? it Tim Simcoe? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, Tom I wasn't Island. there for that particular one. But oh, dude. Anyways, <clears throat> now Worlds is great, man. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about that one Virginia States. Your was that your first contest? You said yeah, Virginia States two thousand uh, two thousand five two thousand five. It must have been. Yeah. Yeah. So Tom Connolly got. Well, did he win or get second? No, he was six. I was eight. I was oh, okay. Last, Never dude. mind. Who won uh, that contest? Someone random. Sebi. Sebi. Okay. He won it with an Element X Nationals edition, the yellow one. Super sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know, like it's old. It's a school chartreuse. <laughs> Beautiful. Love the yo-yo, but like yo-yo nation came down, so Pat came down. Um, that was Tony one of, Bosch ran it. Probably so one like, of the first Tony's, Pat events too. I, Tony's one of the people that like everybody loves. Like I've never met somebody who was like, yeah, Tony guy's a dick. <laughs> like no, <laughs> Tony's spectacular. Like, Tony's like an excellent human being. Um, just to put it in like a really nice way. Yeah. Like so that contest happened. Best guy, Tony. <laughs> uh, just kind of like opened me up to like the world of like. <laughs> Yeah, yo scene, like competitive scene. I had went to like an American race. Uh, yo, yo, jam stop. St- yes. I went to one in Harrisonburg, Virginia, yeah. which is like right up the road. And like, that was like my first like foray into it. I went to Worlds, just kind of watched my mom took me. And then I went to like my first contest competing was Virginia States. And I just remember like, A, I was really bad at it, but like it was a blast. Like everybody back then, it's, it's a little different. Like, Everybody back then had like a way to compete. Like you could do sports ladder, and like you could do sports ladder or do freestyle. Yeah. And like a that doesn't. I don't know if sports ladder division even exists anymore. It does, but people rarely do it. I Most of the time, they'll do like a one minute division for kids to do, and if they want to freestyle, they can freestyle. Like, but everybody freestyle. Like I mean, I mentioned like Tom Connolly freestyled. Like and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, everyone. Like Tom was no, like triple yeah. our age. You know, like everyone freestyled. That's a great point. Everyone yeah. freestyled, and like he was day forty five when we were fifteen. Yeah, he was triple <laughs> our age. I mean. I love John Tom. Rob came down and like that's when I first saw Five A, which kind of got me into Five A because like he had just picked it up. Uh, he was using that's so funny Spin Factor HDs. Yeah, um, that would have been right around when I got into like, it too. Yeah, Dana Bennett was like great at yeah, yeah at the time, like great at Five A at the time, and um, I just like that's where I picked up Five A. Like that was like when I decided like my one A skills are only gonna get me so far. Like, I got to pick something else, and like I picked Five A. I, I picked probably the hardest thing to do. Like, it, one of the harder things. I feel like it's one of the easier alternative divisions. I, see, I don't. Like, the whole idea of momentum. And, like, people don't get that. They don't, yeah. Like, and it is still controlling two things. Like, it's yeah. not like two yo-yos that are equal. And, it's not yeah. like, like, 3A is terrifyingly hard. 2A I can never do. And it's just incredibly hard. But, like, 4A is, like, something everybody always picks up. Right, yeah. Uh, but, like, 5A. Like, kind of like this weird offshoot. I don't even know who was winning nationals at the time. Like... Jack Rinka won in 2005. Yeah, like Shane Karen won in 2004. <laughs> Shane Karen, 
Love Shane Karen. <laughs> Shane Karen is like one of those dudes who I love too. Uh, did he win 4A with the Dark Magic? <clears throat> yeah, and 5 I think it was the same yo-yo. Or no, 5A was with the Element X. Um, How do you oh, win 4A man. with a Dark Magic? That's great. Um, so like that's kind of like what got me into 5A. And at the time, you... Oh, God. The 5A scene where you lived was blowing up that's so crazy to think about now yeah like it's it was amazing to think about now and, yeah and you guys were like posting videos left and right yeah. and like because if shit every week if that was like yeah. happening now i'd be like whoa like who the yeah, fuck remember, are these people uh, like, 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 the, the yeah yeah Videos. And we were like relatively yep. close in proximity. Like yeah. it was obviously three hours away well, or like, whatever. But when's the next time where like I, I'm not saying like it can't happen, but like three absolute legends like you, John Rob, and like revolutionary players. Like those players come along so like not often, right? Like people who really change the game. Like yeah, Tech Five yeah. A wasn't a thing. Nowadays, people get a lot better, a lot faster, but yeah. like they, like you said, they kind of tap out on the well, innovating or trying to push yes. things and like tricking me of the year, like when John and Jake, Jake won, yeah. which I don't know, they tied. I got, I, I thought it was great. I don't know if they ever like had resentment about like did no. they both get stuff. Yeah, okay, I, I well, didn't know how that worked. <laughs> I forget if they. I think they both got the medal. They both yeah. got a copy of the medal or something. Yeah, <laughs> like. That doesn't happen anymore, and that happened. And at the time, the that was time. like an amazing. That was equivalent yeah. to being world or national champion if you were the trick innovator of the year. But like all of you picked up at the same time, and like when's the next time like that's gonna happen? Like where yeah. they all start in the same scene in the same circuit time of yo-yoing, yeah. like all MAR region. All of you guys were the MAR region, like. Yeah. And AJ too. We didn't even mention AJ, AJ yeah, but yeah, AJ. he's the one that's the yep. catalyst to yep. it all, basically. AJ's the catalyst. <laughs> and. It was just like an incredible time to like pick it up, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was always behind you guys. A, I didn't live near anybody who yo-yoed, or much less who like knew what a yo-yo was. And B, like, I started after the boom of five A. Like, I didn't know like I could be good at it. So you guys got like spectacular at it, <laughs> and like I would try and copy your tricks, and like I really didn't get it. Like I didn't get the concept of like momentum and like controlling two things not being like a coordinated dude like not no, really no one was like it's funny it's, thinking back because yeah. like i'm sure watching those old freestyles it's probably so bad to watch where it's just so freestyles elementary and rudimentary like, and like yeah it's a science and people like are really have it tuned down i can't but, like, watch myself yo-yo anymore oh like, no i yeah, can't i can't either. go back and watch yeah. like <laughs> i can still watch like your world's freestyle where you won I like, watched it again for the first time recently. Like, I found an amazing, like, 1080p copy on YouTube. I'm like, who so the rare. fuck uploaded this? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, God, this is so bad. I'm, like, wearing a... God. You I... didn't shower for, like, months? No, I... <laughs> Sorry, not months, no, maybe weeks. No, I, I think I didn't... I, like, stayed up the whole night before. Like, Tressley, like, the morning of, like, Why? saw me. Just because I was, like, a dumb 15-year-old kid. Like, I will practice all night. Yeah, who gives a shit? I'm going to win anyway. And I think you had that in the bag, though. Yeah, well, I remember. I was going to bring this up, and I'm glad that we're talking loosely about these stories now. Do you remember, like, coming to Joey's house right before uh, Worlds yeah, that year? That was, like, yeah. And we, like, had a little Steve and me at his Robin, house. Robin and you guys were, like, making me play with all the different metal yo yes yep. everyone had. And being like, yo, when you win, like, you get to pick, like, what team you can get on. <laughs> we all kind of knew, <laughs> like, you were going to win. I remember, and like, yeah, I got a call from Adam Brewster, like, really <laughs> soon before that, too. That was like, man, I just kind of, like, realized, like, you might win Worlds this year. I was like, well, yeah, dog, like, I'm excited. I just been, I was, like, at home practicing 10 hours a day. you were the only day, guy like, in the circuit. Going in. You were the only guy in the circuit who won Worlds, right? Yeah. But we had national champions, like Shane. <laughs> Shane, yeah. How Shane won 5A? <laughs> Don't know. Great yo-yo player, though. <laughs> He's, uh, I think he said that he, like, literally made up that freestyle like the day at nationals and then practice it like two times before he went on stage and then that was it and then i don't remember what the freestyle looked like i just remember the 4a freestyle and him using a dark magic and i just remember thinking like i'm you gonna use my dark magic with that? that and i remember i cracked every last one of them i was yo yo jam should have gave him a deal for <laughs> that know. like they probably sold a butt ton of fucking dark magics well, for that reason remember the pink dark magic that everybody won nationals with eric koloski uh yuki won nationals yeah. the pink dark magic like it was just a random weird like, fash 
So yep. I don't know if he won I'll nationals. Thatch won nationals yeah. with one too. That's wild. It was like three I years had in a, row, a pink, pink one from that run. I don't know who I got it from, but I was just like, I cherished that yo-yo because of those reasons. I was like, man, all these legends won with one, and then I traded it to someone or I whoever. Think the I fuck just did. found one and it's like completely cracked and trash. That's but anyways, wild. that's sad. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. But like, you won Nash. You won worlds. I was always like behind, and then like I don't know when I got good. I when I got good, I, was, I moved up here, and I could yo-yo all the time, and like. I don't know if that happens anymore, like where people move and like they meet all the time. We were meeting on like a weekly basis and just yo-yoing. Yeah. And like the scene in Richmond took off. And I'll always be like, that's like the proudest moment I've had is like that's all rad. six of us. <clears throat> was it six of us? It was probably four of us. Uh, you know, was, we had Bill, Bill McHugh as well. Yep. He was active with um, Drew White and Michael Vlad as well. So <sighs> like one year at Nationals, I mean, so like the year, so 2011. Let's fast forward. Let's just jump through time. Uh, <laughs> 2011, which is, is that 10 years? It's 12 years. It's like 11 years now. Yeah, when I went nationals, uh, I didn't like, did I want to win? Yeah. But like Alex Kerfman got third place in 3A randomly. And then that's fucking Ji Chung made finals. He finally won A that year. He finally won A that year. That's so like, dope. All in the same Richmond year. boys on the board, yeah. yo. That's dope. So like, that's we, probably other than John Robin I, that never happened with Delaware players. Maybe Justin yep. may have final one year and one A or something, yep. but like, so like Justin almost was bigger than Delaware. You know, like great. John Robin yeah. I put on for Delaware. Justin was a little bit bigger than Delaware. Just, it was easy to yo yo, and like we. That's it, so dope. That's awesome as fuck. And, and it was just like we all got good at the same time because yeah. like we could just yo yo more. And I remember so like. That year at like worlds before that, and at the time, so like usually you kind of know if you're going to nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to nationals the year before. I think I got third or fourth. I don't know. I think you, that may have been your second title. I don't know. Like what year was this? I can't remember. It was two years before I won it. So was that 2009? I did. I won in 20, 20, 2007, 2000. 12 and 2014. I don't know who won in 2009. Maybe Miggy because he won every yes, other Miguel one. Yes, Miguel won 2009, I mean, 2011, 20, 2009, 2010, and then you won 2011. Yeah. And then to Jake. No, I won 2012. What year did Josh E win? The year no one was there. No disrespect to Josh. Just like the I, just year. Don't, I don't know what year he won. But so, was it the year that was in Chico? I don't know. I think, it was yeah. Chico. It was in it Chico. Was in Chico. One of the years that it wasn't organized, they just randomly had Didn't like a pop-up. Didn't you win the year they Chico. moved it inside randomly at Chico? Yes. And you won? With a mistake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I great. didn't know that they were moving it inside, though. That was like so random. Like I, The concrete stage was legendary. I, I know like I hated Chico and I talked shit about it, but like the gosh. concrete stage was legendary. Yeah. I liked it. And it I just, liked... it throws you off like expecting like, oh, we're going to freestyle outside. And it's like, nope, we're going to be in the yep. building 1,200 feet that way. And so, it's like, why? Well, it's funny, like... G and uh, like G and I think you may have been there and um, Alex, I got third place at Worlds. So and it was random. What year was that? 2011. Damn. That's and sick. I hadn't bought tickets. Was that the year I got Nationals. second? I think you got fourth or fourth. Or no, no, no. <laughs> Sterling got fourth. Uh, it was I can't remember who won. I, I just remember like Takei uh yeah, Takuma. I, I remember like that was the year I got good at like competitive yo-yoing, yeah. which is a lot different than today's competitive yo-yoing. Um, and I, I somehow like got first place in prelims and I was like, Oh, sick feeling. Big time. Yeah. I was like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. First it's time a I great feeling place. going in. You're yeah. like, yo, nobody, even people are seated. You're like, you haven't even been on this stage. Yet. I know. You know? Like, and then like an 11 year old Japanese kid goes on stage and I murders it. And seated. you're like, God damn it. All right. Yeah, like, I gotta I, go do this. <laughs> I, I hate it being seated though. Cause you couldn't get it used to the stage. Right. Not, exactly. Not to like get yeah. into competitive yelling, but like, no, I was the same way right? like, I'd rather yeah. have to prelim than be yep. seated just because of that reason. Like you get used to it. You get the nerves out. You're like, this ain't nothing. Yep. Like, I, this could be packed and I wouldn't yep. care. And then you get up there and it's packed and you're like, Oh shit. This is different. Yep. This, it's different. It's a different feeling. Yeah. So I was in my apartment and this, we're in Jackson ward. Um, not the best area in Richmond, in like a tiny apartment and I hadn't bought a plane ticket to nationals. Um, and they were like, dude, you just got third at worlds. Like, why would you not go to nationals? The only reason why I went was because G and Alex basically made me go. And they were like, <laughs> we should all go. fly into San Francisco. Cause at the time we couldn't even get like, it was too expensive to get to Sacramento and get a rental. It's so, like, we went to Sa like, we went to San Francisco and drove down. 
Like I couldn't get into Chico. Like I didn't have, I don't know if I had a hotel. Like, I don't know who I even stayed with. I can't remember. Like, I think it was just randomly I showed up. <laughs> Shit was easier at the time. Yeah. Like you could just rock up and yep. like have, you could catch a red eye yep. and be like, yo, I'm here. <laughs> and like someone would have a floor for you to well, sleep on. Like, like I rented a car and like Yuki and Annie did a ride. <clears throat> they were at San Francisco. Random so as I fuck, drove, right? like four people down to like San Francisco or from San Francisco to Chico. Was that planned at all? Or you no, just showed up at the airport think, and you're like, hey, what's up, Yuki I, Spencer at the fucking airport? Wait, and he's like a legend. And I didn't really like hang out with that crowd that much. Chuck and I ran into each other in Iceland of all places. Yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was so lucky. I had like, like, yeah, we got a rental car. I was like, oh, fuck. He was like, can I, can I, I'll give you whatever money you want to you? Like, just, just get in the car, man. Recess is paying for it. So it I just, also, like, gas was expensive. Even like, I can't imagine. Oh yeah. It was like what three and a half dollars a liter? Oh shit! Oh shit! Twelve or thirteen a gallon or something crazy. Yeah. (laughs) I I just they forced me to go because I I just got third and they were like you have a chance of winning and I'm like yeah dude prime time. I didn't. I honestly like didn't like we practiced a little bit because like I was like I'm just gonna throw my foot from Worlds freestyle yeah which was like copping out but like at the same time if it works once i'm surprised more people don't do that yeah we're talking august september right yeah yeah it's not that far away when you really like if you're a real competitive person especially you got other shit going on like 60 days is nothing to come up and perfect something like and nowadays i couldn't imagine doing something you'd have to prepare like you said in like june july and like run concurrent with worlds so like it's like that's even fucking hard i couldn't imagine if go ahead i'm sorry (laughs) it is not like you're you're right i got i I couldn't. You come just up. didn't practice a lot. No, yeah. like they were like, you should go. I'm like, sure, why not? And Low ended goal. up going and winning, and yeah, that was that was cool. Sick. Like, but I, my favorite part about that year was Harold. Harold won one A. Yeah, awesome year. Wild year, and you got. I think you got second, or maybe third. One or the other. Yeah, I don't remember, um, but. And I remember getting the trophy. And of course, I had never won anything. So I was either first or third. I never got second place in a contest. <laughs> never got second place in a big contest. I don't have, what is what color is it? Red? The red yo-yo medals? Red or blue, one or the other. Fucking yeah. don't have one. I or white, never, red or white, sorry. White is third, it's red, you're right. Blue's first, right? Blue is first, yes. I never got a red one. So I was like, well, fuck. I got all them joints. Like you, of- you got caught, like, I think Mickey got called third. <laughs> and then you were called second. I was like, well, shit, I guess I guess I won. And you, I remember, you're never sure. Like, you never want to be that guy that's yeah. like, oh, I'm like, I won. Like, I got this. And everyone around you like, yo, I think you got it. Like, I know. Hey, you and got I think shit. you turned around and said something to me. Probably, yeah. And I'm sitting there like, no. Like, yo, man, it's some you, Some like, dude you, won. Man. Some random dude won. I don't even know who it would have been at the time. At the time, no. Well, it was like no funny. One. You mentioned, like, the scene, the, the click. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. Like, not to pull out, like, WWE terms to click. Uh, show, like, my nerd status of knowing random things. But, like, every year, three 5A players would show up at Nationals. There was never any more that were, like, really super Contenders, good. yeah, I know. It mean. would be, like, it, I didn't show up in 2010, but somebody else replaced me. And Sterling got second or something like that. Right. You showed up. None of us were never there all together. And I think Sterling didn't show up. It was just, like, me, you, and Miggy. And John Rob, I think, was fourth. And that was like John Rob's most competitive year. Oh, so nationals. nationals. Yeah, you're so, going out. Randomly flew out. Uh, won nationals, but like I turned around and you like I, I just remember seeing like your face. Oh, as you're on stage, uh, right, dude. Right. And I remember like seeing your face, and then like honestly, the rest of it was a blur. But like I didn't know at the time, like I had anxiety. And looking back at it, I'm like, oh, there's clear cut signs. When I got it, I started shaking, and like almost uncontrollably because I didn't like like just the spotlight it was really like oh yeah to me like i didn't know why but like and it's instantly shaking. a thousand people and, are watching oh, yeah you, like and i think either like you or john said like shape up pussy or something like that i don't know what it was <laughs> probably john <laughs> had john to have been say, john yeah not me else. it may have been somebody i would have given you a pat but congratulations man like, <laughs> like you deserve this years in the making right uh, welcome to the club guy we're gonna put some moe in your shit like, uh, dude. like yeah. John Rob shape up pussy. Jesus. Somebody said it. It may have not been him, but somebody definitely said it. Miguel, it might have been Miguel oh, too. Dude. Miguel, I could have seen saying some shit like that because Miguel will have like yep. a split second of being upset and being like, "Man, fuck this, I should have won." But then a second later, being like, "But Sam's really good too, yeah. though. Like Sam deserves it." Like, I mean, and, and and like it was. Oh yeah, so like every year at nationals, there was always three of us who would come. 
And I don't know why, but like all the 5A players would never all show up together. So we never knew who was really the best. Um, and you were probably the best at the time, it, for sure. You were the best in America. Like there was. We no, were all on the same level. Uh, no, we were all on the same level. Well, like when I won, it was any kind of given a shock. day. You know, like, Miggy. Miggy was now na- like nationals was Miggy's. Like yeah, you couldn't beat him. In when nationals. Miggy started winning, I was like so surprised because when I was younger, he was my favorite player. Watching mm-hmm. him like on the Save Death DVDs and stuff, and like. I was like, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to clean up enough that like yeah. judges will recognize how good he is. And then like once he started to once freestyle started to shift more into like the performative way yep. that they are now. And it wasn't just purely like, all right, stand there and yo yo and look like you're doing the sports ladder for three minutes. Like because that's it's funny. Mark Mangaren, who like is really competitive now and is like yeah. really particularly amazing. Like he could be national champion if he practiced hard Absolutely. enough, like next week, like if Evan fucks up enough, like Mark could real talk be national champion type shit. But, uh, like he's kind of comments on that or he mentions and talks about like yo-yo back then versus now. And just like, even though it's boring and homogenized and the meta is so easily accessible to players, like there's certain concepts and things in the, the 2010s or even before then that like, held yo-yoing back almost yeah. like there was a year that like figure eight was like a trick that everyone had like a figure eight variation yeah. of and it's like that didn't push yo-yoing no. forward at all no one like got better because of figure eight yo-yoing doesn't look better because of that you're like, absolutely right in five it was crazy like that i had a completely different style from you yeah, yeah you yeah. had a completely different style from me john was wild right jake was wild like miguel was completely miguel different was than all of us yeah level. like we all didn't have the same looking tricks like and that was what made 5a i feel like kind of cool like it was hard to get from so like this is the worst part about 5a especially back then it was hard to get into the top three. Oh yeah because like one of us three would always show up sterling would show up randomly and it's like okay well that's unfair like there's nothing i can do i'm just gonna get beat by this <laughs> that's <kid."> unfair <laughs> well that's unfair I, I, it was over fucking child <laughs> i know yeah. Someone calls CPS. Where's this kid's parents? You let him come here alone. <laughs> it was just, it was so hard to get from, and that's what, like, when Jake got really good, like, Jake Elliott, like, that was what impressed me. It was like, oh, he yeah. Leapfrogged us all and then, like, really, like, took shit on us. Yeah, that's like, kind of, yeah, he, when, him winning in Japan, like, oh. I was like, I actually, I didn't drink that day because I was banned from drinking in the venue the second oh, no. day. <laughs> Fucking Hironori, who, like, runs the contest. He, like, runs the Japan Yo-Yo Association. I, like, sponsored that year as recess, okay. which is, like, not cheap. And, like, I went to compete and, like, totally fucked up. Uh, like, biffed it, did not final. And, like, I thought I was going to, like, cakewalk into that shit and be like, oh, I'll final. Like, no problem. Who cares? Totally did not final. And then, like, proceeded to just drink, like, the Japanese equivalent of Four Locos over no, there. Shit. It's, like, a ca- it's basically one of these but with caffeine in it. <laughs> and it has no sugar just like a, a cup of coffee is like 30 milligrams of caffeine and had like 150 milligrams of caffeine per like tall boy they're called strongs and you could buy like varying Damn. degrees you could buy like a three percent alcohol one a nine abv one like and they're like a dollar or two a piece like the yen back oh, perfect yeah like the economy was so strong back then the yen trans like the ratio was like so in our favor like so, like you were being economical about getting d- trash yeah i was Perfect. Uh, you can't i better than that i've only gotten black out a handful of times in my life but that was one of those times he was responsible financially responsible, <laughs> financially responsible. <laughs> he had just spent god knows how much money to sponsor oh, the contest my god, so he was like, dude. I gotta, I gotta, and to get to japan and oh, like dude. oh my god i it's funny i was talking to like curdy the other day just about like how many yo-yos and stuff I had sold at that contest or like how many t-shirts I had sold just cause it was like at the time it wasn't like now where there's so many different brands yeah. and like everyone has shit. So like the pie is split up so many ways. Like it was just a very good and popular year, but, uh, Kurt, I forgot that Curdy was, I knew he was in Japan that year, but like, I forgot that he was there that night. I just got fucking annihilated <laughs> cause he was like 15 at the time or something, you know, or like maybe 16, he was a little bit older. And, uh, I was just definitely blackout drunk and like CJ packed up our entire booth for me, like took it all back to the hotel. CJ's that guy. Yeah, he is the man. And uh, like we went to go get curry afterwards and I like fell asleep in the bathroom for an hour and like (laughs) no no one in the restaurant is waking me up. Like no one's trying to go to the bathroom. Everyone just lets me sleep. And like everyone else had been like drinking a little bit, like enough to not realize I had been gone for an hour. But (laughs) on the way back to the hotel, I like, 
fell over into a bush and like just was laying there and they like our CJ is like literally lifting me up. He's like, come on, we're like five blocks low. So I'm like, just let me sleep. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll make it back. Pieces. Like, but like, dude, it's pretty lit. Like people, like regular Japanese people get that lit over there, like for fun, like just to unwind. Like my first time I was in Japan, like I was so scared to get drunk and like I was pretty broke. So I was like, I can't be too economically out of control here. <laughs> yeah, reckless. Thank you. And uh, like I went to get on the subway one night and I had like two beers or whatever. So I was just like, Japan's cool. And then like there's a guy like in a full three piece suit, like red face, like can't even stand up and like two cops just like laughing at him like is he gonna make it through the turnstile i don't know we'll see and i'm like this is wild i can't believe this shit like all right cool i'm gonna go like so equivalent to downtown cleveland yeah yeah no offense to anybody in cleveland i love oh, cleveland man. but i kind of hope cleveland is or world is back in same, cleveland same. For, Dude, same. i don't so, know they have a, they, oh, i guess i want chicago to come back too I don't like Chicago. Chicago. I don't is, like Chicago, uh, though. It's too spread out. It's expensive. I don't know. Well, everything's expensive now. No, you're right. So, mention Cleveland. Uh, we went to Cleveland States. Uh, I, th- I can't remember. Or, sorry. Ohio, Ohio States. States. Like, you're good. I was going to let you. Way to be like I wasn't gonna... uneducated. No, like, no, no, no. I know. I, know. No, I just wasn't going to correct you. You're on You're on one. I was going to let you tell the fucking story. Oh, <laughs> it's probably a great story. <laughs> Brandon Jackson's living in Cleveland. He's working for Duncan at the time. He runs, like, the Cleveland Yard Club where, like, uh, oh, God. All these, like, great Yo-Yo players. Darnell, got Colin, Colin, got to start. Yeah. Like, and, and this is, like, before Colin got really good, but he was already good. Yeah. Like, he could already tell, like, the kid had it. And uh, we were gonna like stay at the Cleveland Yo Yo Club spot. Don't know what. Like sleep in the. Yes. Because no they AC. rented that space, yep. right? No AC. It was like a shop, essentially. We we're gonna sleep there. And uh, no air conditioning. I was, it would have been miserable. It we was the summer. Needed. Yes. So <laughs> we get a call from Brandon. He's like, <laughs> it got broken into. That was my first. Four you were there. Thing. Yes. You were there no, for we were, this. Hold on, no, no, sorry, we were not in the place. No, 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 no. But like, you were there in town when they got robbed. Yes. Holy shit. So, have you ever heard this story, Chuck? No. Oh my god. You, you didn't go to it, but me, Alex, and G, I think went. I don't know. And we get up there, and we end up going. It's to, a great story. Well, it, it got broken into. All kinds of shit got stolen. I don't really know what happened. We were supposed to sleep there. We had driven all night, and um. Oh, God. I cannot remember his name. I'm going to blank. Cleveland? Or oh, fuck. I'm going to fucking dick. Older guy? Because I really like the kid. Just a, oh, it's a kid. Just describe him. I probably know I, who it is. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. such a dick. Anyone oh, in Ohio. No. Who's, the guy? Who's the farmer? Younger kid who farms does beets. Does beets? Yes. I have no I idea. I can't remember his name. Garlic. So. There's I Isaac Sam's farm. Isaac Sam's, Isaac Sam's, thank you. Okay. Like a dick. I'm sorry. Isaac. No, 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 no. I just forget his name. Anyways, uh, he's like literally the only farmer I know. So I, I know, was like, exactly. Isaac, he I'm grows so garlic. I'm <laughs> so glad. I'm so glad that that got you there. Uh, <laughs> his aunt, uncle, like, I don't know what they did, but they had a lake house. So we went from like maybe sleeping in downtown Cleveland <laughs> in an air conditioned room. <laughs> To Dude, all getting a couch in a bed. Fucking lake house. In a lake house. I think I've heard this story before. Well, like, Joe Wilson came? I think yes! I drove Joe. That's why. Because jo- this was, like, one of Joe's first times ever smoking weed before. Yes. And he, like... I think, I think I drove Joe. Or maybe, I don't know. Just a wild experience. I was just like, trying to win Ohio State. So that's all I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like Steve ran a, like I, Steve ran a great contest, um, but that was just like a wild experience. Like, no, that we probably would have gotten. I don't know what would have happened to him if we would have been there. I don't know, but like Brandon was like, you should stay here in this unair conditioned box in the city. Probably wouldn't have been the best idea. Yeah, Anyways, but that was my first like That's Cleveland mad experience, funny. dude. So afterwards, those people, like, they broke in. They stole a bunch of yo-yos because Brandon, like, worked for Duncan yep. and Flambeau. They had a bunch of yo-yos for sale there. Duncan, or Duncan, Brandon sees them for sale on Craigslist. And then con- I didn't know this. He contacts the police and is like, oh, like, I got all. He already got a police report okay. immediately. Brandon's very responsible, of course. Shout out to Brandon Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> he helped Brandon. me make these shirts, these holographic recess shirts. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he, Brandon Jackson made these for me, yeah. 
<laughs> he, uh, they're, they're cut out in vinyl, holographic vinyl. But uh, he sees the yo-yos are for sale on Craigslist. He contacts the police. He's like, yo, remember I made that police report for my stolen property? I see it for sale on Craigslist. Like, can we set up a sting? And they're like, yeah, sure. If you set it up, we'll be there. And they're probably just like, ah, this shit never works out or never happens. So these people show up to McDonald's or whatever. Like, he set it up, like, right next to, like, where they stole the yo-yos from. And it's okay. funny. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. Yeah, right. Like, that, it was something very, like, <laughs> obvious like that. Like, how did you not realize that this was, you know what I mean? That's like so great. And, like, they pop in and, like, get arrested. And, like, Brandon took a video of the whole thing. And, like, they, it was on the news because, like, it was a big deal. Like, people rarely get justice for these things, what? you know? <laughs> I didn't know this part. That's I pretty wild, right? Like, but yeah. I knew about them getting breaked in. That's wild. They got dude. all the yo-yos back. Like, I think, you know. It was probably a broken window or whatever that got replaced, but I, yeah, it's yeah. a hilarious story. That's crazy. I did not know all of that happened after the fact, and now it puts like a I'm whole glad you life. didn't tell the second half of that story. Not I like glad, that's but you know great. what I mean? Because it's a good, good uh, climax to that story. What? Everyone got their comeuppance, justice was served, Wild. the yo yo's returned to their the right. Yeah, oh. good people got treated right. <laughs> it rarely happens in society, doesn't it? Oh what a wild God. experience, though. Anyways, that was my first experience in Cleveland. Um, the last uh, I was, while we're still on the topic of Cleveland, the first time Worlds was in Cleveland, you probably met like the couple of locals we were hanging out with DJ yeah. One Hundred and uh, what was the other guy's name? Fuck DJ One Hundred and. He had like red dreads. I forget his name, but because everyone wanted me to do like a first base edition after world. What? Yeah, <laughs> which would have been hilarious to do. But we're like smoking in my we're like hanging out in my car, smoking weed with this guy one night. And uh, he was talking to us because we're like, man, like the contest ends tomorrow. We're all bummed out. We're going to have to go back to our houses. Yeah. Like, like blah, back blah, blah. To reality. Yeah. And he's like, yo, where are you all from? And like. Kevin Nicholas was in the car and he's like, oh, I'm originally from Indonesia, but like I live in Champaign, <laughs> Illinois now. He's like, man, that's fucking crazy. Like, I love like I, this has like been so eye opening hanging out with you all the last few days. Like, this is crazy. Like, where are you like you from? And he's like talking to everyone in the car and getting their story and stuff. And the car goes silent for like 10 seconds. And he's just like, man, like y'all get to go home tomorrow. And like, I got a fucking pending gun case right now. <laughs> and we all were like. Like, I look in my rearview mirror to make eye contact with everyone, like, whoa, like, this just got real all of a sudden, yeah. And he's like, man, this shit sucks. Like, I'm glad I got to hang out with y'all. Like, thank you so much for including me, like, in all this fun the last few days. Like, world, this is, dude. yeah, dude, I was like, man, like, I'm so glad to have met you, DJ 100. <laughs> It was just so, oh man, World, I felt man. so bad though, like, oh man, this, and it, like you said, like a lot of other people in the car, like, have never, like, Kevin Nicholas comes yeah. from a two-parent home that is yep. fucking in the 1% of Indonesia, yep. and then, like, he moves to America and has <laughs> never like, met someone like this, he's like, you have a gun charge? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> 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 what is this a ghost gun dude. <laughs> 3d print i didn't know that what? either i saw you hanging out with some random dudes <laughs> wow yeah that's me at the contest just hanging out with random, random, random guys some, I went to the, some chick random guy whatever the case the, maybe. did you go to the casino no that was ebes yeah okay you I, know this story right yeah. no dude i i oh, get so like i God. love how you've been so disconnected from i like, got so okay so that contest i remember going i was working in the hotel room so i had a hotel room all to myself because i was like i'm gonna have I to do work remember that, that you had to work i a had bunch, to work right? a lot in the hotel because you would just come down to like 11 yeah. p.m and be like who's got liquor yeah. <laughs> you're like who's I, got the bullet and i'm like what's going what the on fuck is your problem yeah what? so like i was working most You've of that not trip. been around all day um, she's been drinking champagne for nine hours yeah we're starting strong and like by like 1230, everyone's just face down in a bed. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, that contest, I didn't really do much. Like, I competed. I didn't Other than finals. work. <laughs> I worked. Actually and I worked. judged 3A. <laughs> Speaking of which, judging oh 3A is God. the easiest division to judge ever. And I remember Adam Brewster telling me this. And he was like, you should just always judge 3A. It's the easiest thing you ever. If two guys are moving, you're double clicking. And I was like, People whatever. People let Adam works. judge? I love Adam, but. What, Adam Brewster? Yeah. 
he was he taught me how to judge. He's great. I mean, Adam, he did. He like did a deep dive in the judging system years back. It's just surprising to hear that now. Like, oh, yeah, Adam is a world's level judge. What? Yeah, so he got <laughs> me on the panel at Worlds. I don't know. Anyways, on the panel at Worlds for like four or five years. But I judged Worlds 3A, went back upstairs. And that was the first, at least my first experience where Worlds, like where all the shit was in one day, which I don't like. Um, for some odd reason, like having the nightcap of 5A on night one and then doing 1A on the night two. Yeah, like, it's I nice to have it spread out. You're going to be there for three days anyway. Like. Well, it's like you're cramming a lot of shit into one day. And like you wake up in the morning, 2A finals, which spectacular to watch, but who the fuck is awake yeah, after that getting time tore in the up morning, right? Like yeah, It's a surefire way to make sure no one watches. Exactly. Like. Especially now, like knowing like that we're all old at least the competitive scene got older as the competitive scene got older and older and older and nobody kind of took up the mantle for 2a which shout out grant johnson (laughs) for real like talk about a division that's hard to get into but like nobody kind of took that mantle up so like nobody went down there and watched like ben mcphee was there don't know how he was awake and alive at that Taking early in the fucking morning. Pulitzer Prize level f- photographs of Koji Yokoyama but he's going like, ham. He's drunk the night no. before. Oh, yeah. Like, how? He's gotten two hours of sleep. Like, he's definitely still drunk the next morning, but like. I'm impressed. Uh, so, uh, what was I just going to say? Not, it had nothing to do with Ben. God uh, damn who it. was the. Uh, yeah, I, it was how I'd missed everything. Oh, uh, Eves. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Eves story. Oh, no. Oh, Eves because, from the. Uh, well, the casino? He, at the casino, yeah. So he, uh, like that, Ebs got blackout drunk every day at Worlds. But he, that night, Not shocked. <laughs> he Gosh. he's like, we're going to the fucking casino. or go get drinks at the casino. Or like, Ebs, like, do not go gamble. Like, please do not go gamble. He's like, what, you don't fucking trust me? Or they I can go fuck with some money? We're like, we're not saying that. Like, just chill, dude. Ooh. Like, you're, you're like, rambunctious. yeah, like every day you've been going in. Like, please, just like, we're worried about you. Like, don't. Oh, he's no. like, I'm fucking handle myself. We're like. All right, fine. Like it was cold outside, or like it was cold in the casino because like we went in with him, or a couple people did, and someone had like a recessed shirt with uh or a hoodie with like uh the fruit bar logo on it, like yeah. all those fruits on it, <clears throat> and Eves is like wearing it and blackout drunk goes to the craps table and wins like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> That's such an Eve story, though. Yes. That's such oh, an Eve story. Oh and, no! And like the 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 uh, who's the person that works at the table? The casino pit person. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. every person yeah, like they're just like rolling their eyes. They're like, "Yo, you should really cash out now." He's like, "Roll it back, like oh, again, shit. like roll it back, like I'm not cutting now yet." And finally, someone had to pull him away. Like Eve's like, "You're not invincible. Like you have like thousands of dollars now. Like do not. There's no reason to like. Need, you don't need any more money than this. Will pay for your whole weekend." Yeah, pay for a minute. And then the next day, him and uh, Ian go to a bar, and there was a soccer game on, or it was a baseball game, or it was a soccer game. There was a couple sports games on, but they went to watch soccer. And, like, there's a bunch of Cleveland locals there, and Eves is, of course, blackout drunk. It's, like, 3 p.m., and he's, like, going in and, like, arguing with these dudes. And later we found out from Ian that he was flirting with the bartender, who was, like, this hella cute girl who was, like... Fair enough. But she was, like, actually giving Eves the time of day because, like, he can... Like, he's got the gift of gab, and, like, it's these two redneck dudes who, like, can't talk to any woman in their life, you know, and, I, and it's just like some random like five foot six Indian dude in vans like taking your bitch. Like <laughs> I'd be mad too, you know. He tells the best stories, dude. Oh it's my great. God. So he, they, they eventually refuse to serve him because he's like far fighting with these people down oh, yeah, the bar. And then he like walks out of the bar and then kicks a window <laughs> out. Yeah, dude, it was gnarly. Kicks a window out. Like it was like a lower window. So like it was like a separated like by like a pane of glass or something oh or like a middle pane. Kicks like the lower window out. It shatters. Like he loses his shoe inside the bar. He's like running to, to Ian like just ditches him. Not like because these two dudes are like six foot five construction workers. And it's Ian who's like my build, but like three inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> and Eves, who's blackout drunk, and then Ian, who's like, "Yo, this guy's got fifty hundred dollars, and like, there's three sheets of the wind. I better make sure he doesn't lose this shit." Like Eves or Ian just takes off, like it doesn't like run, but it's like a few blocks down, and these guys proceed to like kick the shit out of Eves for like forty five seconds, a minute long, like, and eventually they walk back to the bar. I think they took his other shoe. Yeah, he I'm showed sure. that. So he showed I, back th- up no he, shoes? I think he may have had one shoe. Well, I know. Well, regardless, they didn't take the money in his pockets. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't run his pockets. 
I mean, it's. I mean, retrospectively, I, I it's like got a little bit of what he deserved. Um, no, I feel you. It's just funny. Retros- everyone brings up that point. It's like he didn't even get robbed. And it's like we weren't in the hood. We were in downtown, <laughs> downtown Cleveland. Cleveland. Like, Regardless, you it know, was kind of, you know, uh, rightfully so. He got fucked up. But like, <laughs> a situation where if you get your pockets empty, are you really that shocked either? It's oh, right. No, I feel you. the story I've ever heard. How did I not know this? And he just walked back to the hotel with he like a like, lumped up gotta, head and like, like shoes and literally money. one shoe. Yeah. And he just got a pocket full of money at 20. He's like, I need shoes. like, someone go buy me fucking vans right now. <laughs> and CJ had a job at Journeys at the time. And he's like, I will go buy you shoes. Just relax. Like, we have to take you to the hospital to make sure you don't have a concussion. It's like, I'm not going to any fucking hospital. How much do I have to pay you to give me shoes? And he's like, trying to eat. He's like 200, 300, what? <laughs> what? Like, Eves, what is your problem? Like, like what? stop. Like, just fucking, fucking relax. I love Eves. That's spectacular. Dude, it was a great weekend. And then, like, one of uh, <clears throat> Steve's good friends who's a nurse came up and, like, did the eye test for him. And, like, they were like, he's probably fine, but, like, keep an eye on him for a few more hours. Don't we let didn't, him sleep. He we didn't let him pressure. drink anymore. We kept him up. And, like, within an hour, he was totally fine with it. And, like, oh, man. Well, fuck, I missed out on that. Good one. times. The next year, or the not, the next time world is in cleveland uh at in another yo-yo factory room paulo got like super fucked up one night paulo bueno and did like a stone cold stunner through like a glass table in the room like dropped like a hot dab rig on the carpet and like burned a hole in the carpet or something ben had like an 800 uh room tab afterwards i was like paulo what the fuck like who's gonna pay for all this and paulo's like (laughs) i don't know bro (laughs) good times in cleveland now that we talk about how much debauchery shit has gone down in cleveland i remember that first year too when we were there and i we had a suite for like the recess room like they gave suites to the judges yeah um but like a couple of the judges were like they were there's only two of us staying in this room like do you want the room and we'll just stay in your room and i was like yeah for sure so i had like 10 recess dudes in a suite and then they took my two bedroom and it was fine for two people yeah and like we did, ended up packing like closer to like 15, 18 people in there. Cause of course there's stragglers in the world. So I'm like, dude, we got a free fucking room. Come, come yeah, crash yeah, yeah. on the ground, That's bro. the best part about worlds. Like, right. It was dope. And then like we all ordered so, or I'm not gonna, there is a person at the contest. I'm not gonna put them on blast, but uh, they, they, there was like a, a finesse online for a while where you could like, place an order on the dark web for pizza and then someone would steal someone's identity and order the pizza for you and then like what <laughs> dude Crazy i didn't shit. believe this shit worked <laughs> until this kid like literally a 16 year old kid at the contest was like i'm gonna order pizza like who wants some and i'm like all right like whatever I and like literally like an hour and a half later <laughs> that he's like it's here and we're like what's here and he's like fucking 15 pizzas from domino's we're like nah we like He's like, yeah, bro. Like, and he calls downstairs and like, sure enough, there's all these pizzas. Like, so like whoever can like give me money, like give him a little tip. The guy, the fucking Domino's driver got like a hundred and eighty dollar tip or something. Like he probably creamed in his pants. But like we like later we found out it's like a juke online. You know what I mean? Where like you can just pay some African hacker that like steals someone's identity and orders hella pizza. But we all like. We're all high and drunk and like eat way too much pizza and wake up the next morning and didn't clean any pizza. There's pizza box strewn all over the room. That's a yo-yo contest. There's fucking ants. Like, how do we get ants in a hotel suite? Like, we're and the hotel was nice. And it's on like the second or third floor. Like, how could there be ants upstairs? (laughs) Did you go to Lakina at at Worlds like in Florida? Do you remember the Lakina? Who stayed there? I can't remember the guy's name. Dookie. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like how both of you guys are like Dookie. Yeah, I, I was gonna say we smoked <laughs> we smoked a bunch of promethazine in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who could ever forget? I remember, I remember the, the pizza guy coming in. It's like well, actually, I was partying with you guys. And we're like, hey, yeah. come on in, man, dude. I just remember, like, he couldn't stay. I, could he not stay at work? Like, I don't. I never got why he decided well, he to stay, stay at the hotel. Maybe I'll tell you that story in a minute after oh, I tell you the story shit. for this punchline about uh, Ian. So Ian, who's on recess, Ian Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like sleeping on the floor, and he was like dead, passed out. We all wake up, and Ben Gates or someone wakes up, and he's like, "Oh, oh, there's fucking ants everywhere, dude! What the fuck, bro? There's so many ants everywhere!" And Ian like literally rolls over, and he's like, "Dude." 
The ants are just chilling, man. Just like let them vibe, bro. <laughs> 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 like did not even open his eyes like just literally pulled the blanket like why is there so much light in the suite right now bro <laughs> fucking love big dudes first of all the fact that you said big dudes would say that great oh i'm dude. almost positive as ben gates because yeah like he sleeps with he only sleeps in like boxers and a tank top yes. no matter where he's at yeah. <laughs> like you look like a 70 year old jewish man but you're a 20 year old jewish yes. man like, oh fucking love this dude bringing it in early. Yeah. oh my fucking god um so Ants. Dookie at uh, that Worlds one year, he like didn't book a room at the Rosen, and the room sold out as they often did because yeah, it's yeah, late yeah. in the summer in Florida, and they always like had a block of rooms. So we like got caught smoking weed on the balcony at the Rosen, and like the staff, we like every lo- year somebody got caught smoking weed on the balcony. Yeah, well, they they eventually got upset. Dookie that year at Worlds, that was like the last year I think it was in Orlando, maybe okay, or yeah, second to last told, year. I don't know anything no, about was, the story. I did not last year so do you want to tell the dookie story i mean i guess i'm part there i'm there I'm you guys there. this is more your thing i'm listening this is- <laughs> yeah no i i didn't go to world's orlando the last year it was there i had to work and couldn't get off okay so it must have been like 2012 then or 2011 but yeah why did you originally bring up the la quinta well, i didn't i just know that it was a thing like it was, the- it was close it was, yeah i just didn't like i knew that that yeah, 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 you yeah. could stay there, but it's like you could stay there, and it was just like the guy who was doing drugs was like there. And I, at the time, like, <laughs> like not to sound like a snob, but like Dude, I was a drinker, was I smoked cigarettes, but like I didn't do anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I got like into like other things later on in life, but like you guys would all go there and come back just like trash. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was only like, that one year. I feel like we never had another room there, but that one year was a Oh, my God. <laughs> like, oh, we got kicked out of Plaza? Okay. You guys would come back looking like $1,000 of, like, just trash went down the $1, toilet. $1,000? I mean, you guys looked terrible. Like, no offense. Like, you guys would come back red-eyed. Oh, my God. Just sad face. First of all, you guys were probably sweating your asses off. Like, A, it's at the Lakina, so probably trashy there but like you probably walked back or something like oh, that yeah. i don't know yeah, the story we walked back right and you guys would come back drenched in sweat <clears throat> bloodshot eyes looking terrible like everybody knew like who would go to that, that was a hell of a year yo like everybody would know like oh they went there so we were smoking weed on the balcony at the rosen and then like they tried to kick us out or whatever but we like narrowly avoided security somehow and like dookie hadn't gotten a room at the rosen that year and he like wasn't broke, but he like didn't want to pay the money to get a room at the Rosen because yeah. it was like three hundred bucks a night when we didn't have the the block rate for the yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, oh, I don't want to pay all this money, and like no one really has a room to stay in. And it was like, oh, like I think it was like one of those things, like oh, well, if you can't find a room, you can just stay in my room on the floor or whatever. You'll figure it out. So like afterwards, we're like going in his car to like roll around International Drive and just smoke weed in his car, and we like drop to the blunt in his car but he has one of those cars that has like two and a half feet of water bottles in the back seat <laughs> so like he's driving down to national drive in florida where it's like abhorrently illegal to yeah, smoke yeah, marijuana yeah, heavy well, especially right now yeah. like back and, in the day yeah it was just not a good look all around so we pull over and i'm like oh like let's find it in the car and like we pull over in a parking lot like several miles down to national drive and once we got out of the car i like look down and i'm like oh there's a money clip right there and and it's like a stacked money clip. And then Dookie goes, guys, I found a money clip. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? He's going to spend the money to get a room. I'm OK with Fair that. Enough. You know what I mean? Fair like, enough. I wasn't like tripping. If I was like, yo, man, you need to break that down. But I was like, and Dookie's the homie. Like, he always yeah. hooks everyone up. So I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy. It was just mad funny. It was like such a hey look back he's like ah i found it yeah it's not like he doesn't have money or anything you know but it was just mad funny because he's in that like desperate mode of like ah, oh, i don't have anywhere to stay i don't know what to do it was like oh shit money clip cool like god they found some fucking money and it was like five or six hundred bucks it was crazy like it was an absurd amount of money just to find on the ground it was crazy and then he booked a room at the la quinta for three nights which like it was like eighty dollars a night which was so he like pocketed some money he was yeah, like fuck it yeah was, it paled in comparison yeah, that was also Oh yeah, you hooked it up. Because I remember when we would go to Orlando, we would just get to Walmart. We would go to what? Well, because I would always drive. Oh yeah. Because I fucking hated flying to Florida. 
hated air, I hated Orlando's <laughs> I airport. Hated flying to Florida. I hated flying to Florida. It's like one of those places that you just don't want to fly into. I Orlando only flew into Orlando. I take that back. I flew into Orlando multiple times, but the last time we flew in for Worlds, like I was on a plane that dropped like eleven or twelve hundred feet in ten or eleven seconds in there. Like Ooh. it just basically free flew. Ooh. Like, and I was like sitting next to like two seventy-year-old people that are like obviously okay with dying. <laughs> like <laughs> they're gin and tonic no. just flying. <laughs> I grabbed the old lady's hand and I was just like, oh my God. Like, I felt so bad. I felt like apologized profusely. Like, oh, it's okay, son. Like, you want a drink? Like, we'll get you a drink. They should comp everyone drinks right now. I was like, Jesus I Christ. So speaking of like bad experience, I think fun. speaking of which Trevor, I think was on that flight, Trevor Owens. Oh shit. I'm almost positive he was because we had a layover in Texas or something and he's from there, I think. Oh, that's right. You were coming from Arizona. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like thinking, I was like, wait, Dude, weren't you in? Because I got off the flight and like Seth was on there, Clint was on there, and they both were like, oh, it was a wild ride. I was like, we almost fucking die. I'm out. (laughs) No, dude, I'm I'm terrified of flying. Then Travis like just had his fro like, I was like, oh my fucking God, I can't believe this shit. I held some old lady's hand. Dude, since then, I've been like low key terrified of flying. I'm terrified of flying. Uh, same experience. Uh, before then, I would pass out before we took off. I'd be like, oh, it's fine. If we crash, we crash. Oh, I'm fine dude, with I'm dying. Out. Yeah, I'm out. I, like, whatever. I fell asleep on a flight. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm a Dramamine addict on a plane. Like, I'm borderline, like, Dramamine overdose every plane ride. What is the, like, dosage of the pills? Sickness, no, I know like, what it is, but, like, what is, is it, like, 10 milligrams in a pill? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. something like that. But, like, you're only supposed to take, like, four in a day, but I take, like, two before the first flight, and then I lay over 30 minutes, and I'm going to take another one. So, like, yeah, I'm, like, sitting there, like, drugged up on Dramamine. And I'm on a flight from Richmond, and this is unyo related to Milwaukee, or no, Philly to Milwaukee, because it's like nobody flies into Milwaukee. I'm going there for work, and the plane's banking, and it like hits some turbulence. I'm passed out, (laughs) and I wake up on the turbulence, and I scream. Oh my god! First of all, horrified, yeah, (laughs) embarrassing. Like I'm sitting there, turning bloodshot red, not knowing what's going on. First of all, I think I'm, I'm. That's it. Were you sleeping on the tray table? Dude, no. So I'm not. It's a it's a two and a one seater, and I'm sitting like kind of in the front of the plane because like I had extra money. Like they were want to pay for like a nice seat, so I was like, fuck it, I get the nice seat. And I wake up and we're turning, and the and the chick, uh, the the flight attendant comes by. I was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "No, I thought that was it, lady." I'm like, "Get me <laughs> I a drink." That was it. <laughs> I, I so she like gave me coffee because like I'm trying to wake up at this point because I'm like dreaming an overdose, and she's like, yeah. "Can you go to the hospital?" Because like I'm like, first of all, I'm passed out, dead on a flight, couldn't move me. She could wake me up for like getting like coffee and stuff, and like all of a sudden I'm awake after screaming on a plane. Like a, some 30-year-old dude screaming dude. on a plane. So I have not flown since then. That's gnarly. Holy yeah, it, nothing shit. happened. They hit turbulence on a right-wing turn, but, like, when you wake it's just up. It's scary. Like, you, it's, I woke up woke during up. the turbulence, yeah. and I was like, that's it. I'm, this is it. And, of course, like, I think I had just watched, like, We Are Marsh or something like that, where it's a plane <laughs> trip. And I was like, fucking dumb idea. <laughs> well, like... Yeah, not knowing I had anxiety issues and like, I'm putting myself say that through too, it. Yeah, like, like you don't know, and you're just like, I'm gonna watch Castaway before fuck, this yeah. move, before this flight. Um, so like the first time I went to Orlando for Worlds, I think the liquid mm. bombing threat just happened or something like that. What year was that? Two thousand six. May have been yeah. So were Cause you because you were on the way to the airport too? Because I think I didn't was... fly. I drove that year, but I remember because okay. I was already at Worlds and a bunch of people's flights got delayed. Yes. that were all flying in on Thursday because you probably were flying with Sebastian at the time, and he was also flying in. I don't know what happened. Was but... there like a UK terrorist attack yep, or something? You're exactly yeah. right. Right. So we all. I was driving to the airport and the news just broke, and my dad called, and of course, he's like, "This, this." He knew how anxious I was. Again, not knowing I had it, but. He was like, don't tell Sam, but they, they just found liquid bombs in, like, Europe, and, like, it's going to be crazy there. I had a Jesus bag full Christ. of yo-yos. I had a bag full of yo-yos, and I get searched, I think, four times at the Raleigh-Durham airport, four times after I checked in, Holy because shit. I was walking around with, like, a bag full of yo-yos. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck's in this? I get searched by, like, a dog. Anyways, I've had terrible experiences flying, and I really hate it now. <laughs> uh, so looking back at it, like, it probably all led to me, like, hating flights. Just, like, that one thing for you. But, like, that's probably the reasons why I never went to, like, an overseas contest. Because I'm terrified of flying. Yeah, that was one 
every time I fly overseas, I just like bite the bullet and I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it yeah, people fly all the time and don't die. So I, I guess I'm not going to die. Like, it's fine. But I've never, like, flying overseas, it's never been that crazy. When I went to Russia, it was, like, a, I want to say, like, a 13 or 14-hour flight. It was really long. But, like, I was so tired that, like, I knocked. Like, Ben was pissed off at me that I didn't fit Ben McPhee. Like, I didn't fill out the customs form before oh, he shit. landed. And then, like, to hap- like happen to find out, like, we get to customs. And Ben gets pulled aside. And his wife is just chilling there with Damn, me. And I'm like, dude. what's uh, like what's going on? And she's like it's this crazy thing like there's this international financial terrorist his name is ben mcvee too so every time we travel internationally ben gets pulled aside Damn, dude. yeah and i'm like this motherfucker was upset at me for not filling out the customs <laughs> and he's like, about to get pulled over and like i literally slept 14 hours straight. we were there for like an hour and a half and i was yo-yoing like yeah. it, it pitied no mind to me and i was just like oh, i'm gonna have to demo this weekend i better like get ready like and his wife was like Thinking back, of like, she was probably really low key there. Like, oh shit! Like, hopefully he like makes it out and everything's fine. Because he got deported before Ben. Like, I remember. I remember hearing about that's that. That's so gnarly. Like, I couldn't imagine. Like, that's that sucks, so dude. crazy. But, All because of your name. Yeah, on that flight, I was like out like a light, and then woke up in Russia. Like that was one of the. That was like the only time I ever passed out and like never woken up on a flight the whole way. I don't even like. I didn't go to the bathroom. Yeah. Nothing. Fourteen hours on the plane. I'm out. Was that, well, was that like? 14 hour airtime or like 14 hour because I know the time zones. I forget. It was like JFK to Moscow or whatever. It was a Holy direct flight. Holy shit. Yeah. Iceland way, not like California way. Right. I yeah, forget, to be Europe. honest. I would have to look it up, whatever yes. it is. It was a long flight. It was no, like the like longest flight I've ever taken. Yeah. Like That's the longest. I've had flight. terrible experiences while flying. I don't know about you guys, but like every time they do the random check, like the rent. I mean, this is like before they started doing the backwards hands. Like this is. <laughs> Of course, like I'm old, <laughs> so like they, they would cup you, you know, like on the back, like this hand, shit, this hand. shit was <laughs> real, and like they were like very unregulated to like what they could do to a person. I got sodomized at the airport. So, I'm going down. I I think this is one of the world's trips. It's like after 9 11. I actually take it back. This is not a world's trip because I didn't start going until I would go for it. But anyways, after 9 11, I'm I'm getting on a plane, and I'm mm. I'm probably like 10 or 12. And of course, like they had started, like they had built like the room where they could do like investigations, and like it was just a closed door room. It was like this random pop up, like it was probably like a cubicle they put up with a door. And I'm ten or eleven or twelve or something like that, and they're like, "Oh, every fifth or so person has to go back and get investigated." When I'm with my mom, I get pulled into that room by myself. Yeah, you didn't bring beside your mom in, a five year old kid. What the fuck? It's fucking terrible. And of course, like, there's no regulations, so like they're cupping you and all this shit. It's, it's just a very weird experience. It's like I hate flying. Watching a kid get touched in a <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Here? Not to like get real on this podcast, but like no, on this, that's on this wild, thing, dude. Like you're fucking, I hate borderline flying. like abuse of your yeah. like you know civil rights. Like it's kind of crazy. Like I hate flying, man, just because of that shit. Yeah, right. Well, it's like it, they popped up those rooms because, like, we need to – like, the TSA has never caught a terrorist, by the way. It's just a, a known fact. They've deterred terrorists. <laughs> wow, They've never, never caught a terrorist. Wow. No, like, how are you going to catch a ter- – like, what terrorist would go through TSA yeah, at this point? Yeah. Has a TSA ever caught a terrorist? The answer is no. Um, just a wild experience, but it has all led to me being terrified of flights. So, like, that's one of the reasons why I never did international contest. Uh so I won the <laughs> last contest I won that was like worth a damn was Duncan. Uh, oh, you went out I, to it yeah, yeah. because I always thousand see dollar cash it. prize. It was you great, were trying, dude. I was trying. Like it was a good contest. We were like, fuck yeah, we want to win. Did it's they fly you bucks. out to that though? Uh, Did hotel they pay room. your way hotel room? Uh, they gave us. I think they gave everybody hotel rooms. Oh. They did well, just because of were, yeah, that? you were affiliation. I was Yoya Factory, and I think because Augie did not like me. Like I think he did, was Miguel was not at that contest, right? No, it was me, you, John, Rob. Yeah, he definitely was, flew John, Rob out. John, yep. Rob got a hotel room, maybe even room with you or something. It was purely like a Augie like did not like me after Yoya Factory type well, thing. I mean, it wasn't like a personal thing. Yeah, it was just like a. Not even fuck Yo-Yo Factory, just like because I worked there, you know what I mean. I was so close. The cash prizes were spectacular, too, right? Yeah. And that was like right, like I was at the tail end of my career. It was like 2013. Like I'm not. That's a good W to go out on. Man. Oh fuck yeah, dude! I got the cup. I got another cup. I never won two nationals. Yeah, and the cup. trophy was great. The trophy was sick. 
So in a thousand bucks, and this it's is probably the nicer than the Nationals Cup the <laughs> before Worlds in Prague. And I had got my passport. I was totally ready to go, but I realized I was terrified of flying. This is again not really understanding like my life. Like I kind of understand it now. Like anxiety, I was like, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can't remember what people like. Peter Kafka's there. Remember Peter Kafka showed up? Duncan flew out a bunch of people oh. just for the day, like just for a couple right. nights to get him out there. They're like, you just won a thousand bucks. There's your plane ride. And I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. I'm like, it's the week before Worlds and I'm going to buy a plane ticket to Prague? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I got taxed on that money. I'm still upset about that. I get why. Anyways, that was the last contest, like the last big contest <laughs> I won. And that was probably like the last big contest I competed in. And I remember you going hard at it because, like, it's a thousand bucks. Like, and I think a lot of money. I had to pay rent at the time. <laughs> that was real money at bucks. the time. When you're an adult, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. When you're a kid, you're literally just going to buy, like, fast food and, like, dumb shit with it. Or, well, like, that's a good question. Like, did you like contests better when you got yo yo prize? Like, I take it back. Like, there was some where I wanted the yo yo prize. Like, Virginia State's always had the crazy wood yo yos because of Tony. Yeah. Those are dope, yeah. <laughs> and nobody could get them, and he would get them special made and all this shit. I wanted to win yo-yos. And there were times I wanted to win cash prizes, and I don't, like, know what they do now. When people put efforts into prizes, it was cool, but, like, it's all circumstantial. Like, Scales always does cash prizes, yeah. and, like, but they really hype it up to where it's, like, tied to how many people register. Yeah. So it's, like, a, the, the promotion runs congruent where it's, like, oh, like, there's another person registering. Like, that means the pot's up to 1700 bucks now. Yeah. Like... Um, they put on a great like I dude mean, that's it's amazing yeah that's really cool like they can do that that's like, the future of yo-yoing online contests yeah. the way that everything's running but like people will eventually start to figure out how to get everyone to yo-yo together in person again but like well who, i like, don't know you run a club still but like who runs on clubs off, anymore yeah. uh spin docs or dxl sorry dxl LA, still does there yeah yeah and it's pretty good like on a on a regular weekend, they'll have 20 to 30 people. And, like, if they were really pushing it, there could be 50, 60 people out there. You know what I mean? Like, in L.A., there's probably 75 people that yo-yo. I miss Mitchell's train. 75 to people. Dude, yeah. The fucking yo-yo club there was insane. Yeah, it was like dude. You, The wall of fame was spectacular. Really? I wanted to get my fucking face on that wall. Even Curdy and you and uh, Mater and everyone yep. now. Like, what a, a graduating class. Yep. You know what I mean? There's like a rap magazine every year that does like a, it's called the freshman class where they talk about the new incoming rappers. And it's like, like you said, thinking back to that Mitchell's list and you only pass a sports ladder. It wasn't like, yep. it meant nothing. You know what I yep. mean? Like in the grand scheme of things, like ultimately now, like if you learn the first 20 tricks, it's like, oh, congratulations. But like, you wanted great. to fucking get up there. You wanted right. your face up there. You're like, fuck yeah, like, I want my face up there. I'll do like a school or a camp and I'll teach a kid like up to trapeze who like literally couldn't throw it yeah. down 20 minutes ago and an hour later. It's like, oh, cool. Like literally you could do like Mach 5 if I had like an hour with you and tell you how to bind. You know what I mean? But like, it's because the yo-yos are so much better now. I like, learned so much shit. That I, I think I only went to like club maybe four or five times just on like the way up. Because I think club was on Friday, and I was always travel there on the Friday, and I would get there. Yeah. And, like, I learned so much from, like, you and John about, like, 5A, but, like, how to practice. I think that was, like, 2007 was, like, one of the first years I went up there or whatever, and you were practicing. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, I got to be like this kid. And, like, and you you had the ability to practice nonstop. I, I could, probably I, looked crazy at the time. You know? I, I remember 2007, like, going to Tennessee States that year and just, like was literally, like, would refuse to not practice for, like, four yeah. or five hours. Like, the day. dedication you had was People insane. would be going to sleep, and I'd be like, I'm going to go to the cafeteria and practice. They'd be like, what, what is your problem? Like, like Danny you would be making that fun much? of me and being like, you're a fucking idiot. You know that, right? Like, no one cares this much about Life was simple, shit. man. But, like, you had a goal, and, like, that was super respectable. Right, yeah. Like, but it taught That's me. That's all I cared about. Like, it it's so taught crazy me, to think yeah. about. It kind of taught me that, like, I couldn't. I know it sounds stupid. Like you remember when like Takeshi got really good. Yeah. And like you would get up on stage because me and you would make finals. I think I made finals like six years in a row. I think you made it like eight years in a row. Like we were perennial people that would make finals. And this is like the reign of Takeshi in 5A. And this is like when I realized like third place is okay. Like yeah, I'll fucking dog. take it. You're basically and, like, winning. Like, like at like, that point, like you won amongst the Americans. Third like. place we win. And like the last year, 2013, the last year was in Orlando. I think you got second. I got third. I got third with a changeout, by the way. Um, I just no, remember, like, 
I, I remember I was like, the world started to change. Like people started to care about their freestyle and like, it wasn't my style, like terrible performer, but could like bang out tricks. Yeah. yeah. And like, I threw out every trick I created as fast as I could. Cause I was like, well, I fuck remember it. that year. I yeah. cannot win. You were like, going in. I was like, fuck it. I'm just gonna go as fast as I can, as hard as I can. And just dump tricks. And I dumped every trick I had, like, in the bag, like, just on the stage. And I was like, well, fuck it. If I hit everything, I might do okay. And I got third. Um, but, like, <laughs> I was the same way that year. I was like, like we I'm never going to win, so fuck it. You know what we I mean? We were a different era. Yeah. Like, Leave it all on the table. What's the worst that's going to happen? I think like, the <laughs> most performance me and you would do would be, like, walk from one side of the stage to the other. Yeah. And I can't remember if it was you or, like. graph a couple tricks to the music. But, like, that that's all it. you needed back in the day. Like, yeah. A couple, like, uh, Buko, like, when she won, did, like, yep. a really choreographed oh. routine. But it was, like, to a level where, like, you would be sacrificing points to an extent. You know what I mean? And, like, yes, yep. yeah, and it got to a point where those became so crucial that, like, you couldn't afford to really. Now it's kind of leveled out where people have figured yeah. out how to yep. do both. Like And, like, it was back when yo-yoing, like, freestyle, there was such a variance of, like, what you would see on stage. Yeah. And, like, I just don't think you see that i'm not trying to call it anybody but like no for sure like, do you it's not definitely... see that anymore like and i i've stopped watching yo-yo videos to a certain extent i watch like the big ones every year. i watch worlds yeah i like watching who wins 5a because Sora's is still like Sora's is good he's good no. crazy yeah. like it just just i couldn't be that creative in 5a like i don't get it um but like if you go back and look at like the older videos like you're right like they aren't that good, but, like, what they really showed was, like, the judging system was so immature that different people could win. Yeah, yeah. And, like, now, it's pretty much, like, you gotta have, like, this combo, this combo, you gotta do this move, it's you gotta really walk this way. It's really some 1% shit now. You yeah. gotta, like, do exactly this to win, and, like, you kinda know who wins. Like, like I think Gentry won in the first year in Cleveland? I don't know who won the first year in I Cheyenne. forget, but, yeah. Whatever. Somebody, whoever won, I was like, she, oh, well, he Cheyenne, won. maybe? Yeah, yeah, it was, like, Whoever won was like, oh, they won. They had, like, the exact same thing. Right. And I feel like the creativity um, is something that scales, like, I think has a chance to push. Like, getting back to scales, how this all started. Like, they had the chance to push, like, creativity. And that's, like, why I'm a huge fan of, like, when they run something. Because, yeah. like, they're, like, we want you to be as creative as possible. They put a lot of emphasis on yeah. it, for sure. So, like, <clears throat> that piece of yo-yoing, and I know, like, they've worked on the judging system. And it's changed entirely since, like, me and you were good. I think it's like gone ups and downs. Like I think the old system really pushed innovation to where you could be unique and win. And now it's kind of not there. And I think I'm hoping that it comes back with what they do. And I really think that's the value of having them kind of lead the way with yo-yoing. Cause like without that, it's just so cookie cutter. Like yeah. to win a contest, you need this, this, and this. No, it definitely is, and that's why people don't really care about contests anymore. Yeah. Or, like, it really has become, like, the upper echelon, and you have to be the best of the best. And like you said, we're it's splitting hairs where yeah. you know the top ten, and it's, like, the only thing splitting them is, like, ah, he missed three string hits here, and, like, this person just choreographed yep. their front style combo and all. The, you know what I mean? It's so minuscule, the differentiation. We would the go on the circuit. I love the fact that you call it the circuit. The circuit. <laughs> it's such a, great, a good thing. On the East Coast, yeah, it really makes a lot of sense. We were going the circuit, everybody would compete. And that's because it was more approachable to compete. And, and it you was would compete so in multiple fun. divisions. Yeah. You'd at least do 1A and whatever other division you were you, halfway you, decent at. Exactly. And I feel like that's not here anymore, but like mainly because the small contest scene's not here anymore. And it's harder of COVID, to compete. Right? Like people yeah. kind of respect it, but they also like the barrier for entry is much harder. And it's like. Yeah, I don't know. You like I see people that compete in the like amateur freestyle division, and I'll be like, shit. that person is pretty. Like when I was that good, I was like trying to compete in nationals and shit. Yep. Like it was a different time, you know. But it yep. was just like it's because people get so much better now. Like, I know, I know. I can't. I mean, I don't. The amount of practice just to get there, and like the amount of like just sheer like raw speed. Like I don't get that. Like I just don't get it. Like how can you move that fast? I'm not. Godspeed or whatever. No. I'm pull out a thing. <laughs> Not to shout out anybody, but like, I know that's, that's viral thing, but like, I don't get it. Like, I used to think Mickey was fast. Like, back when he Dude, was. Dude, Mickey's still fast. Like, when you watched his 2005 Worlds freestyle, like, he's fast as shit. But it's still like, it's different today. Like, the amount of dense tricks that happen today at the speed they do. Right. No, I feel Yeah. You. Like, it's just, it's a different world. Like, back when we used to compete on like the circuit, it was just. 
go out there, have fun, show your coolest tricks, and hopefully you win. Like, remember when, like, P- like Pennsylvania State's Mikhail got third? Yeah. Or second? He and won. Sean, he won no, that and one Sean Fumo got second, and I got third. Yeah. What a weird-ass top three. Like, there will never be a contest where Mikhail gets first, Sean Fumo and gets Mikhail second. And Mikhail literally went, like, perfect. In a school with exactly. no air conditioning, like, somehow oh. he found, like, the one cool... I forgot all about that. I wish someone had that freestyle on tape somewhere. I hope Somebody do. does. I feel like... It's gotta be, like, 2008 PA States or something. Wasn't but... Ben Gates filming then? Probably. Someone has to have it. It was, like, yeah, it was, like, 2008. It may have been 2008. It'd definitely be one of those yeah. contests with, like, the lights turned off. It's but... just dark as hell. It's in a school cafeteria in the And Mikhail drops the craziest freestyle and yeah. wins. He used, like, some weird Hispanic song with, like, a crazy <laughs> Dude. guitar in it. It was like, yo, Mikhail's going off. This guy's gonna win. Like... And Sean gets second and... I always like Sean's freestyles, but that again, that's a different era. Like, right, yeah. Where I kind of understood that yo-yoing, but like, not a lot of. I'm pretty sure some of your younger viewers have no clue who he is. Right. Yeah. Um, he came he, to. I will like occasionally go up to Massachusetts and work at Yo-Yo Expert on some video stuff, and like, he'll randomly come out to Yo-Yo Club, and I'm uh, like, oh shit, it's Sean, and like. No one at Yo-Yo Club has any idea who he is. Yeah. Like, obviously Andre does and everyone else, but it's, like, all the little kids there and shit. It's, it's just like, yo, this guy's a legend. Like, I know. Well, it's like the year that, like, Alex Lizidiak showed up and got third. Yo, at, I like, wasn't there, but that's one of my favorite freestyles. Oh, dude. I what? used that song years later for freestyles <laughs> just as, like, a shout-out to him. Fucking Alex Lizidiak. Do you know who he is? See? We're, we're oh deep cut. Uh, deep cut. He's an old Yo-Yo player. Who yep, is from uh, Massachusetts? Had a uh, a shirt from the Pita Pit on like on stage, <laughs> and when he I was wearing basketball shorts and and uh, and uh, sweats over it, and they were like halfway down. Yeah. And I just remember that he got like I think second or third. third I don't know, yeah. spectacular dude. Yeah, that was, like, the kick free- side, like yep. amazing freestyle. Like he's good as shit. Um, what year did you get on Yo Yo Rec, dude? Uh, 2011 at Worlds. At Worlds. So. I had went down to Worlds without a sponsor. Uh, I was using... I yeah, don't even... Like five yeah, I was using a narwhal. Yeah, you said something from Steve. Yep, I just something. didn't have... I didn't have a yo-yo. And, like, uh, on stage during prelims, the prelims I got first place in, uh, the pad ripped out. So I'm Jesus sitting there, Christ. like, re-siliconing this yo-yo, hoping I can use it tonight. <laughs> and I think Steve uh, from Word was like, I got, like, pads, but they aren't the right size, so I'm just going to slap, like, five in there. And the yo-yo's playing awful. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is it. This is, like, this is my one chance to, like, Damn, do something sucks, good at Worlds. Yo. And, like, my yo-yo's falling apart. So I see Kingo. And, like, I had said hey to him in passing, and he just was like, hey, do you want this shirt and this yo-yo? And handing me, like, two equals MC squareds. I used the equals MC squared for like six years. Like I, it sound, <laughs> I don't six like change years. a and, like and, all the time and, I, and and like he would give me shit about it. Like, cause not repping his brand properly, but yeah, like yeah. at the same time, like don't break what doesn't work. But like, yeah. I like small yo-yos. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. I like smaller size yo-yos and it was like the perfect yo-yo for me. I won nationals with it. I got third at Worlds with it. Like it's funny as a manufacturer, just like yep. just fucking remake it. Who cares? Yep. Like, but he was like, "We don't make this anymore." Especially as a pop and brand, they could make anything. And people well, after like it, his you know? brother, whatever happened with that? The company, yeah, yeah. Like he stopped producing the older stuff, and that was like kind of when I like kind of fell off of it. But like it was just a random thing at Worlds where he was like, "Do you want to be our only American player?" And I was like, "Fuck it, why not?" Yeah, let's do. So like I was the only American player, and then oh fuck. Sid was on it. Yeah, like that's randomly. so funny. I think your teammate was. Sid. I know, yeah. spectacular. Um, so it was just like random. It was just random at Worlds where I didn't have a yo-yo. Like I, three hours before he handed me the yo-yo, and I that was the first time I had played with it. That's a cool story, though. I mean, well, it's like you know how it is practicing. Like your shit's the same. Like your string length's the same. Yeah. Uh, it's such a mental game yep. where like it's a mental game. leading exactly up to right. it. As soon as you have to change, you're like, fuck, like I'm going to do so much worse. Like I used to do things on purpose to not like, I would practice with a different yo-yo every time. Just so I would never have like a yeah. personal attachment. I want to be like, I, this one works the best, man. I would always be like changing it up and like, I'm going to use the worst kind of string. Oh, I dude. Find. Like, <laughs> I, it, it was and, the dumbest shit. Like, yeah, you would think it would make you better, but then you'd realize that. Uh, oh, it's so it's debilitating. Like it's like, so bad. Like, you don't know, like. 
I was like working at Yo-Yo Factory. I could have had the nicest shit, whatever yep. I wanted to. And it's like, oh, I'll just use this orange string that we can't even sell. Like, no one wants to buy this. Like, yep. I'll use it. It's fine. Like, well, I would like randomly pick up like a really skinny yo-yo and practice five with it because I thought it'd make me better. And I would just get really incredibly frustrated and yeah. just throw the yo-yo and stop. Like, people never do shit like that. <laughs> no, it's like you think it's like training, but it's not. But yeah, like didn't have a yo-yo freaking out like what the fuck am i gonna use i have like he's right i have like five different yo-yos i'm like i have no clue what i'm gonna use yeah, he got boxes he got boxes in the mail like because like we, we said we go there every boxes week boxes of yo-yo like, rec yo-yo or not like boxes but you know like every month yeah or, you know, every once in a while like, yeah he got he'd get like a pair of each new yo-yo and he'd like play like now nah, like i'm a mean g you're just sitting there like <laughs> you start just you know like these are cool like that's probably why g likes all yeah. that japanese shit <laughs> Hey man, they make good stuff. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but like, I just didn't. I didn't have. I guess I didn't have time to think. So first of all, Kingo's a legend, in my opinion, at least. Like, yeah, he's a good guy. Like, it's just, and that team was like, in my opinion, like legendary. Because I, I didn't know. Oh, like, yeah. first of all, chubby white kid on a team of nothing but Asians. Like, fuck yeah, I want to be that guy. Like, I want to be the first guy on that team. <laughs> it's such an interesting juxtaposition. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like. Chubby white kid from Virginia. Like, why not? Um, that too from the South. <laughs> yeah. Like, I did not fit in at all for his, like, for his marketing scheme. I get it. Um, you would but, look like Tony in that photo in his house with his wife's family. <laughs> Just random. Uh, but it was, like, completely random. And it was it was good. I got a lot of free stuff. Um, it was kind of like the clout team. Like, he's oh, the yeah. only white guy on that team. And he's the only white guy that has that shirt. Like, fuck yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Like so, that was that was really cool, and like I really appreciate it. Like you weren't even on in like the golden age, were you? No. I guess you kind of were, right? Like 2015, 2016. Yeah. Like, so I right got when on drop near and shit started to take off. Well, no. So I was on 2011 to like 20. I I really kind of I don't know what happened. I just got stopped getting stuff. Sorry, I'm not trying to call anybody. I don't no, know what happened. No, yeah. It's it is what everybody it is. grows up. They get older. I right. didn't care. Like yeah. I didn't need free stuff anymore. Like I made enough money to like do whatever I wanted yeah, you to do. Get whatever you want, yeah. Um. Like, I didn't need a sponsorship at the time. So, like, I don't know if it ever, like, officially ended. I just stopped getting stuff. <laughs> I'm still on Team yo I don't right? really know. <laughs> if I am, it's cool. I'm yeah. wearing a t-shirt next weekend. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, like, I was kind of on, like, I mean, you just, like, Sid was on there, like, randomly. Um, Kango. Kango. Shinya, yeah, yeah. Shinya, like, he won nationals. Or he won worlds with it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that was, like, right when I joined. Um and I can't even tell you, like, they have just a ton of players. Like, God, I didn't know how big Ryota, the team was. Ogi, yep. who else? Who is that other guy who's on Nikki's team now? Uh, well, they were all super competitive. And, like, I wasn't competitive until, like, 2011. So, I was like, I don't fit in at all. Like, I don't think Kingo's known. Like, <laughs> I didn't think Kingo know. Like, he just kind of knew that he I didn't know, have a yo-yo. Right. And he was like, fuck it. Give him a t-shirt. Like, this guy needs to be on the team because he Hajime needs a yo-yo. is on yo-yo rec now. Did you see that? Oh, shit. Hajime, Mir, and Mariah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. So, yeah. It'd be funny if I'm still on the team. That'd be hilarious. That would be your so <laughs> lost. Like, oh, shit. I'm on the same team as Hajime. Damn. Uh, so, like, yeah, dude. Like, it was completely random. Um, and that world was just, like, a blur. It sucked because not having a yo-yo, not having, like, consistency. Um, like, picking a yo-yo up 30 like i'd never played with that yo-yo until like three hours before the contest. it's kind of crazy how worlds back in the day if you were a competitor would really like change the next year of how you would yo-yo because like i was the same way with duncan yo-yos where it's like man i'm getting pretty good but like i'm playing with yo-yo jam yo-yos i'm like yo-yo jam is never gonna put me on the team because yeah. aj's here so like and now it's funny because like so many teams, like they almost prefer to sponsor people that are in the same region so yep. they can film together yep. and they promote together. But like back then I was like, Yo-Yo Jam would never put me on the team. Like I better play with a free hand because yeah. like I could probably get on Duncan maybe. He'd never put me on the team. But like <laughs> I remember like because I think you won and I, I don't know what happened, but like all the stuff was saved. Death was happening. Like you were getting a signature from, signature from them and I just – like, it was I a feel weird like Duncan time. missed the opportunity with Duncan him. Duncan was a weird. Like, they were yeah. in between people trying to run the yo yo brand. Yeah. Like, they probably figured that, like, people on the yo yo team, like, people who were older, like, I don't know this for a fact, but they probably were looking at it like, this isn't going to be a forever thing. And, like, 
Tyler's so serious. Like, why yeah. are we? And I was like a conceited ass. Like, I was very not cocky, but, you were but like good. I you was were a world champion. Be cocky. But back, no, no. But like, I'm just saying. Like back then, I was so like you said, I was super focused. I yeah. wasn't taking no for an answer. I'm like, I'm not not practicing. Yeah. Like, so that was like weird to a team of people like that didn't give a shit about any of that. Yeah. And like they they liked that I used their yo-yos or whatever, but I was just a immature kid you know what i mean i think they knew that like it's i i'm the same way now where i see kids who are very good and like they'll use recess yo-yos and it's just hard to gauge like how long they're gonna be involved yeah. and interested and it's like well like who's been around i mean i hate to say it call us all but like even when like we were at 10 years we were kind of like you were still competitive at 10 years yeah for sure i mean high sight's 2020 you know what i mean but, like, and it all worked out but who's competitive at 10 years anymore like i know gentry's like those guys are yeah, but like those gentry's very an outlier few and, right yeah like few and far between yeah one percent yeah it's yeah. not like many even people, less probably one percent of the one percent <laughs> yeah you get better quick now and like you get really competitive really quick if you really try hard but you don't compete long. Like right, people yeah. aren't around like seventeen years, eighteen years, nineteen years, twenty years anymore. I mean, that was a good uh, like part with Gentry where he kind of had a slow burn. Where it was like he excelled quickly, but it was also like he had a good yeah. four to five year like build up. And then like as much as it sucked that one year he didn't final, like it really kind of like took him off a lot of people's yeah. radar and then like when he had that strong comeback next year, was like, oh shit, man, this yeah. guy is fucking the man. Yep. Like, and it helps so, yeah. it helps not being around i think that happened i didn't show up at nationals yep so that's what it's like the year that i won nationals i didn't show up the year before it before. definitely helps yeah, yeah. people be like oh we're like this guy's back and he's doing pretty well and, so like he's finally like he must be practicing again like I, it's funny because like that was i wasn't practicing but like the year after i when i came back because i was like fuck it i'm gonna try and defend the title I'm trying to take it seriously of course wasn't ever gonna happen like i feel like i struck i struck lightning once and i was like fuck it i got it so 2012 i show up and i remember jason lee shows up he competed that year i was lit that year with jason the whole time <laughs> dude so jason lee shows up first of all never met him before but like idolized him not knowing like anything about him like yeah. idolized his yo-yoing um because like from our era like he's like he's the, the legend he's right you know right. like the legend and he's like He's like, well, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, I won that. <laughs> he loves you. He, I, I, I think I, if you, you'd probably know better than I would. I feel like I kind of remember that happening. Yeah, like, we're in line turning in music. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, who the fuck? I'm are like, you? I was like, I know you are, but like, you don't know who I am. And he was like, Miguel Very standing behind him. Very respectful way to approach someone. Like, you don't know who I am, and I know yep. who you are. Like, but Miguel standing behind him, and he was like, Sam won nationals last year, and he was like. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, congrats. Yeah. It was like the only interaction I ever had with him. Also um, a very Jason interaction. And then to be like embarrassed for half a second and be like, maybe if you were good, I'd know who you are. <laughs> so like, you <laughs> fucking asshole. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, loved it. I just, I, like, I know it sounds like terrible, but like, that's the typical like interaction with him. I heard I would yeah, get yeah. and I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm cool with that. The money. Yeah, he's uh, like, but speaking of like nationals, do you remember Brandon Morneau? Do you know who Brandon Morneau is? That name rings a strong bell. I'd have to like see a picture so, of him, but it's like not to mention like shitty yo's and like keep forever. But uh so the DV8 sitting over there, I'll Brandon keep that forever. Brandon Moreno? Is that was he know. on the Omega on the in like from Moreno? Seattle or something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you know exactly yes. what I'm talking about. Sorry. Uh he had like one really good freestyle, but he had like he was good for years. He was on Team Omega. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, so I won nationals. He I tried jump to like make a weird comeback for those couple years, or it's like he why? came back in 2011 and judged. It's, it's like, why are you yes. here? Who's letting you judge? Why he's are you a competing? Chef. Like, yeah, he's a chef. He's super successful, but he just came back in yo-yo. We but went he... to his restaurant on a yo-yo tour one time. It was really what? good. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I, I knew who he was. Great yo-yoer, and I won the national cup, and I was like, that's eh, cool. I. I met him that night. I'm like, Brandon, oh my God. You know, like fanboying out like a little nerdy kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody Someone does it. Someone who you recognized yeah. 10 years ago. And you're like, oh shit, this is cool. You're still here? around, yeah. He handed me like his signature. He pulled me back to his hotel room, handed me his signature edition uh, Hyper Warp Heavy Raider. Raider. Oh, wow. Kept it. It's still at the house. Dude, that's uh, fucking ill. King. And I was like, I could throw away the cup today. I have this <laughs> fucking yo-yo. <laughs> he said I could throw away the cup today. <laughs> like, fuck the cup. <laughs> Did you ever drink out of the 
Yes, I drink out of the cup because you made me drink out of the cup. That was one thing I wanted to do once. I, like when I was planning on coming down here, I was like, "Man, like if Sam's cool with doing the interview, like I need to bring down one of my Nationals cups and we need to like drink out of them during the interview. That would be hilarious." He made me but... do it. Except for that, remember there was that one time at the Seva meet where <laughs> were you trying to take the shit in the cup? Yeah, is that what it was? Wait, you took the shit? In the yeah. Cup? In my Nationals Cup, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> slurp, slurp. Oh, shit. You weren't there for this? No, I don't think I was yeah, there. Was, this was, like, right after I first got a video camera, and I was just filming myself Dude, this doing, was like, everything. Wild. Like, this is just, like, typical 14, 15-year-old kids. I just love getting shit. naked I mean, like, in I'm front not, of dude, everyone. I remember, time. remember like... before or after the space After? Okay. Just after. Okay. Maybe it ran, like, pretty concurrent. <laughs> like, very around... <sighs> Definitely around Man. the same time. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Okay. Hold on. I got to stop loved this story. I getting naked at the time, you know? So, we go to Tennessee States. You guys come down. This is, like, right at the end of your tour. I don't know why you guys were like, we're just going to go to fucking Tennessee we're States. We're just going all we'll over stop, the place, We'll yeah. stop at Sam's house and then drive the eight hours. I remember My car had broken yeah. down. I took my brother's car. We watched Boogie uh, Nights. We hung out of your... Did we watch fucking Boogie Nights? We would like we stay did. up till five o'clock in the morning and just sleep all day for no reason and then practice uh, for like three hours. <laughs> like, And we're in the middle of nowhere, by the way. Yeah. So we get in the car. Oh, God. I'll never forget this. I had to go back and I think it was where you were sitting or your brother was sitting. I had to go back and shampoo my brother's seats. Because we I, sweated, th- so. yes, because it was like a thousand degrees in te- in Tennessee, and I don't know why I wasn't running the AC, trying to be a cheap kid. I think like he was being even with the air conditioner, it was hot. It reason. was just yeah, hot. It was so we drove out to Tennessee. Idiotic. Like, well, and then like my brother's power steering pump broke, and like we got stuck out in Tennessee. Remember, even fucking broke the AC or something at the time. Maybe. Well, like, do you remember you know? uh, Luke Vader bringing all of the chocolate bars from yeah, Mars and the dark those, chocolate yeah. Twix that never made it to production? And Adam Brewster's <laughs> apartment at, at Nazarene Christian College or whatever is the floor gallons, is covered like in like these M&M's these packages. wrapper packets, dude. It's disgusting. I had to shampoo the seat when I got back because my brother said the car stank. Dude, I bet it's ridiculous. So I remember that. that I was, was thinking about that trip on the while well, I was thinking about memories to recount on this trip. Was that that same trip when we were leaving your house? And we were going to Tennessee States. And we left hella early in the morning, and that guy started like, uh, like tailgating us through the mountains. Yes. And like at first we started like making jokes about it, but then you started going like literally ninety miles an hour <laughs> yes. on back roads and yes. just fucking in your brother's Subaru. And I was like legitimately <laughs> scared. I'm like, yo, this is not cool. And the guy yep. behind us is like. Just he could have been like inches away from yes. your car. Like it felt so horrific, and I was like, "This is a horror movie." Like, because we're to get fucking from, die right now. to get from Tennessee or to get from Danville to Tennessee, you had to drive like up the mountain and then get on like forty because Danville's not near any fucking highway. And we yeah, have, that a, was we have like a, there, no one had cell phone signal. The GPS had no signal because no we one even, had. We all I, had cell phones at the time, yeah. But did we have like cell phones that could work? No, like, we just had a regular like you know how like Garmin yeah, or yeah, yeah. or whatever. But like so, that was out of yeah, signal. You know where you were going, but like because it's I kind of yeah I remembered where we we're going because I I'd driven to Tennessee at least right, like three or four bunch, times yeah. since then. Yeah, that was that same trip. I remember that specifically, and I was like, "Holy shit, what a trip!" Like, I remember God we all got to damn. Knoxville, and we're like, "Oh, we're already in Tennessee," but you then drive to drive four more hours to get to Nashville. Like Tennessee is like the world's longest turd of a state. That's also before the time. Like now, when you like want to go somewhere, you just look on your phone. And you're like, "Damn, five hours!" Like that's a large. Drive. <laughs> but back the time, then, you're like, "Fuck it." Yeah, you would just like think about it and be like oh like it's probably four hours the tennessee boy cave more than five hours and like it's an eight hour drive to tennessee like why yeah. did we fucking do this <laughs> but another driving experience you mentioned the guy following us yeah like, and and me like oh, being yeah. paranoid he so me, uh, <laughs> so me and g come with so i would drive down from richmond to danville because that was basically to, to north carolina and that was a good you know for us that was gotcha, yeah. fair it was for me. I had just been driving maybe two years, and I would drive the rest. Of the and he would drive the rest. Of, and then I would try to like get an hour or two in every once in a while, but it was just too intense. And it's, it's rough, un- yeah. unfamiliar area on the highway in someone else's car. It's sometimes like, not highway. Sometimes the Appalachian Mountains. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude, I, I remember. I remember that one time I went to Georgia and like Sam was no going. GPS he was going like no day, cap, like, like, like twenty five over and getting honked at and like that's crap. wild. Highway. Yeah, Jesus but anyway, Christ. so Danville. We get to anytime I go to Danville, I get a speeding ticket. Back. 
sucks. That's just what it is. It's gnarly. It sucks. Um, that one I got G with me. And we get to Sam's. You know, we have dinner. We're chilling. We're about to head on the road. We get to gas station to fill up. Sheets. Sheets, whatever. It's like the only one gas station in the town. Just like everything else. (laughs) Yeah. But um, so me and G, you know, we're going to be in the car for like another 12 hours or 10 hours. You know, it's going to be a minute before we get out. Let's stretch our legs. (laughs) And we're at a gas station. So G, we decided to walk because he wanted to smoke a cigarette. We actually, we, I wanted to spark up a joint. He wanted to, he wanted <laughs> oh, to hit his yeah. chillin'. Ah, so, so that was that was that. So we walked to the back of the sheets. Like, oh, that's this story. I've never heard it. So but we're, I you know, me and G, we live in Richmond City. You know, we went to VCU. We were used to walking behind buildings and alleys. And like, that's just. Spark it one up. Yeah, that's just what it is. Shit. Yeah, it is so what we went behind is. the building. And I, I noticed that my I'm casting a shadow on the brick wall. And oh. G's like standing in front of me. Like looking in this cigarette thing, and I'm, and I'm just like, like, "Damn, I look cool as hell smoking this like, jazz I'm cigarette." Just, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I look at back me, and I see the cop wall? spotlight on me, and I'm just like, "I look at G, I'm like, yeah, man, let's keep walking." And I'm just like, "He's like, oh, okay." I'm just like, "There was a cop back there," and he's like, oh, "Okay," he pulls out a regular cigarette, starts smoking it, and we walk beyond. There's like, you know, it had like the trash dumpster. Like, why fence. would he even spotlight you? Like, because it's fuck? Danville, bro. This anything, hey. su- everything's suspicious. Like, so we we keep walking. It's like it's like a shopping plaza, but it's like an extended one. It's like three shopping it's plazas in one. There are breaks. Only. There are breaks in it. And, you know, everything's closed, but, you know, we walk behind the sheets and then we like, in there, there's like one cop circling right and then we see another one circling left, like, just to like keep eye contest on us all the time. And we're like looking over there, like looking over there and then we like walk past the sheets coming back towards Sam's car and, uh, you know, one of the cops says to us like, hey, how's your night going? And we're like, good. And we just keep walking. And he's like, hey, I'm talking to you. And it's just what like, the I'm hell? Like, yo. I'm like, whoa, wait, take it easy there, bub. You know, um, and uh, he's like, so why'd you guys walk behind the sheets? And we're like looking at each other like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, we're not allowed to walk behind. Like, yeah, he's like, well, it's just suspicious. Like, I mean, nothing suspicious. And, you know, what if we worked here? Like, yeah, well, you know, it's also a different area. I feel like Danville, yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. everybody knows everybody. Deep there. South. Everybody knows. <laughs> Not really everybody. deep South. <laughs> like there's there's a drug kingpin. They know who he is and they don't touch him. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm telling you. I, I know. I know. I know. I spit facts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's facts. valid. Um, yeah. And um, so at that time, I have a joint in my the little band. hat room and G has a chillum in his cigarette pack you guys are fucking um he's smoking a cigarette at this point and i can smell my joint like when i turn my head i can smell my fucking headies officer this is loud as hell <laughs> sir and, 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 um, one thing came to another he's like so what are you boys doing here and we're like we're just filling up gas before a road trip you know figure we stretch our legs and they're like well you mind if we search the car and i'm just like oh, i'm oh. just like no and then like i've been watching videos on online yeah. i'm just like well for, i mean i don't consent what an to egregious any egregious violation of your like, fourth oh, amendment yeah. rights yeah, I'm just like, i don't consent to any searches or seizures and Officer. i'm like and also it's not my car so really i have no say and i'm right. like i kind of like i was like i was being like this is the like, yeah fuck you but also like I mean, he probably had no idea though he's like we're kind of allowed and, and then, to search and then he walks over to sam and me and g are just talking amongst each other while this happens so so i'm inside getting coffee at <laughs> two in the morning yeah, i don't know it's definitely yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're like let's leave early like, like a bunch of idiots i could also see how maybe late at night the cop might have thought that chuck was black too <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. An asian dude and chuck walk behind yeah, there like come on <laughs> so mixed ethnicity you know you just so, never yeah i mean it, <laughs> and it's a different era right like social justice is not a not thing yellow, right not yeah. so the cop asked me he was like so was sam like, pulls out his iphone one in serviceville <laughs> I wish. I wish. So, first of all, cops being a dick. Not going to lie. He was like, what's going on with them? I'm like, they're from fucking Richmond. They can walk around. And I'm, first of all, like, I'm being kind of a dick to the cop because at this point, I'm pissed because I want to get on the road. I got to drive 13 hours. Like, I know you're late. getting arrested, yeah, but, like, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> Charles. Like, I want to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, I got to be in a car for 13 hours. I want to get the fuck to Orlando and, and, and do some shit. So, finally, he's like, he was like, well, like can I search the vehicle? And I'm like, no, did I do anything wrong? And did they do anything wrong? 
So finally the cop, like, he says, like, oh, well, they're just weird, aren't they? And I was like, they're from Richmond. They can walk around fucking buildings. Yeah, what like, a crazy thing to so in- finally inquire the cop, about. Like, he's just suspicious. Well, like, can we search your car? Like, so what? it ended up that my dad worked in, like, the life-saving crew. Ended up this guy worked at Life Saving Crew too. My dad worked there like decades before. But somehow I knew he worked there. And like we ended up chatting about that and he was like, okay, I'm gonna let you go. So the whole entire trip, I got these guys out of like possibly being searched. I, I pulled you guys out Dude, there. that would have been awful I down there terrible. too. Oh my God. I had a little over a quarter ounce on my bag. Oh, you've been fucked. You'd have been fucked, dude. You'd have been in jail. When I got arrested, so. We were in uh, Idaho, and, like, Joe Wilson was with me. Oh, and that God. was literally, like, the only thing on mine was, like, whatever happens, just don't let Joe get arrested. <laughs> like, oh we might God, not dude. ever get him out of jail from fucking Idaho. Hey, I wasn't going to let, like, my dudes, like, go to jail. Like, I was, <laughs> there's no this way. Is town, <laughs> oh, this is your town, Sam. So, like, I ended up chatting with, like, life-saving crew. Like, I was, like, trying to be buddy-buddy with them. But, like, in the end, I was like, no, you can't, like, like, you're, like bro, why bro. would you search my car, dude? Like, I did nothing wrong. I'm inside getting and coffee i don't know what the fuck they're doing out there can they not walk out there there's a, actually there's a car wash back there which you could have said you were looking at uh, yeah, we were just, just, but again, like, like you like, said different like, time like, 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 but that was it's like well i'm about to be sitting down for 12 hours yeah like, I like I that was the work. worst way to start a trip like i was absolutely terrified i was like Going it's like, could you imagine if night. I didn't show up to Worlds and said I had to bail out Charles yeah. and G from the Danville City Jail? That's exactly how it was when I got her, like Joe had to fucking count out a bunch of money to get oh, CJ god. and I out of jail. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh god, I don't have to get him situation. out of jail. And I was like, am I gonna go to Worlds? Like, I know that's selfish. Like, I was like, no, but that's what we realized. It's like because that's, that's fucking up your life. But when it's you're like, focused, what year is this? You're saying 2011 or it was like 2011 or 2012. When you're focused like that too, oh, you're dude. like on some other shit. Like that, yeah. that year I won, like they fucked up my music and I was like, oh, you're pissed, weren't you? Yeah, they were about to like, just they're like, well, like why can't like just freestyle or whatever? Like, does it really matter? And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I worked like, so hard on this. Yeah, sure. Right, yeah. And I like ran upstairs and like got my CD out of my room and stuff. And like, luckily I have like, smart enough to burn a backup copy at the oh, time. Dude. But I was just like, holy shit, like, how does this happen? You know Wasn't what I mean? Wasn't that the like, worst when, like, some shit would happen with your music? And I know, like, to completely digress, like, when some shit happened to your music and, like, you didn't have it prepared, you had to, like, go on oh next. My I God. used to hate that. It's the worst like, that anxiety. that was the worst thing. Like, my anxiety is, like, already high, but now I have to wait. My hands are getting sweaty. Like, it was the worst experience ever. I think it happened to me at, like, 2012 Worlds, where you had to turn in music early, and they were like, we tested it out. Like We listened to it. They said Greg. ho in it. <laughs> like, like, Greg, I know you said you listened to it, brother, but, like, none of your shit's working down here. Why are you having music issues? And I, I love Greg. Most of the time, I think Greg's hilarious. But I uploaded uh, a zip file, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even listen to and it. And Greg's oh. super smart. He coded the judging system that, like, broke all of a sudden. And, like, all these competitors. And, like, are we going to have to restart freestyles? Like, we didn't know. So, like, a bunch of shit happened that year. That was, like, the last year it was in Orlando. Yeah. We give Greg a lot of shit, but Greg's the man, ultimately. Dude, he ran Worlds He's 10 years, right. man. Yeah, like, yeah. respect. He lost, well, I don't know if he lost money, but still, like, Consistently doing it for the- he'll fucking claim to the end of time. I'm I mean, sure he did. Exactly. <laughs> on, like, like, on paper, I'm sure he made it look like he lost yeah. a ton of money. <laughs> like, I guess, like, I, I could see it, but, like, I wouldn't want to deal with me. Like, you know, like, could you imagine every year, like, Dude. thinking, oh, I got to run this big ass con? Like, and I know Steve, like, Steve did it two years. Yeah. That's incredible because yeah. I know he's probably like these fucking ingrate we, kids. We're outliers. Ninety five percent of the people, ninety eight, ninety nine percent of the people, even are going in there with like a level head on their shoulders. They just want a regular event. They don't expect any kind sort of. of special treatment. Like ah. we don't go in there expecting anything, but it's just like, yo, just let me fucking do what I want to do in here. Exactly. <laughs> like, I help kind of build some of this, you know. And it's like. What a fucking ingrate. Like, yeah, I'm an ingrate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know Steve. Yeah, I, I know Steve it. and, like, uh, I know they were just, like, these fucking kids. Like, all they do is they feel like they're entitled to everything. They're all older. They're drinking now. They're causing issues. They're being dicks. They're smoking weed on the yeah. countertop. Like, I loved in Cleveland where all those kids are just playing Smash in the lobby. Like, they all <laughs> had monitors set up yeah. and game cubes. I'm like, this is crazy to see. Like, y'all are, like, we would just be out in the lobby, on. like, falling over drunk and yep. you guys are out here having a smash tournament this is crazy <laughs> damn dude times have changed <laughs> times have changed probably better it is you know i'd rather have kids getting lit on smash bros than fucking oh yeah 
anything we were doing. Every- Smoking promethazine blunts at the La Quinta. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a person who drank who was our like era who wasn't 21. I know. I know it sounds terrible. No, Not to promote. Was pretty chill in our era. What were you gonna say? I know Tom was handing out beers like candy, like responsibly, <laughs> responsibly. responsibly. Yeah, he well, wasn't. He wasn't well, like uh, seven year old. Like, hey, right. I haven't no. not shotgunned a beer with Tom at Worlds every. Not shotgun, but comfortably drank a beer, several beers with Tom at eleven o'clock in the morning. Courses in his room. <laughs> Fucking love Tom Connolly. <laughs> but like, it's always within a. Res- you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. never. He's just. He's like someone's uncle that just they're having. Yeah. A good time you know he's not gonna hurt anyone yeah right we're We're safe yeah it was fun yeah he's not driving anywhere yeah well that was the beauty about worlds is like once you got there you could stay there and like you you didn't didn't go anywhere even if you did even if you like i mean there was so much around that hotel like i remember like a lot i remember word had a celebratory party at hooters one time i remember going to pizza hut with some random kid I met my first year. That was cool. He was actually, he introduced me to the first um, fish line string. It wasn't like that clear one, but it was like that that nylon braid hmm. silver, but it was all silver. Shit that Markmont used, he swore by it. I suppose, <laughs> Markmont used the same string for it, yeah, yeah. it didn't have any twist in it. It just it was It was symmetrical. Line? What the fuck? And like as soon as it went off, you could see it. It was interesting. Um, it whipped too much. You know, again, that's why they have like one string nylon or whatever. That they, was the Markmont shit. Yeah, no, this was before. This was just 2007. Okay. This was early, early. But again, it was just like people were still doing new things with strings. People yeah. were going to the craft store and getting new polyester and like, I'm having a rig up and I'm setting up. Did Alex talk about he used to make strings? He did not talk oh, about fuck, that. Fuck, dude. I could tell you some shit about Alex. I love Alex, but like he used to make strings. So when he broke the world record for Shoot the oh, Moon, yeah, he, started he made that string. Oh, wow. Like I long, think that's a sick. Long string like, Shoot the Moon or something? Yeah, dude. He has the record awesome, for that. Yeah. He beat Dave. That's sick. And him and Dave like had a contest, and it was serious. Like I really felt like Alex was like, I gotta beat the fuck out of Dave. Yo, and I love Dave. We gotta show you this, depending on how long you want to hang out for tonight. Well, I'll show you some like funny clips from it. There's, do you know Noel Coons? Yeah. So like one of his friends was like in a film school or communications class or something, and made a documentary about him, and it is, it's a piece of American cinema oh, that you will Are not you serious? forget. It's. It's like the room level comedy. Have you ever okay. seen the room? Yeah, like I get guy? it. Like it is just on another level of like hilarity. Like I, we've watched it on the projector. Oh before, shit! Like, multiple <laughs> times, multiple years in a row. Like I hope no one sees this, just because like we all love that documentary. It might have like eleven hundred views. I guarantee a hundred of them are from us. <laughs> I've, I've seen every other contest, every place you meet up. You're like, yeah, let's watch it. Real yeah. talk. Every year, I maybe only watch like one or two actual cinema movies. Okay. Like whenever Uncut Gems came out, that was like the one movie that year I watched. And last year, I think I watched uh, Interview with a Vampire. What's that one with? Uh, not Tom Cruise. The one with uh, Brad Pitt. And okay, uh, I got the it. Other yeah. One they, like shout out. He just had a kid. So and congratulations. A young Dunst. Noel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've watched that Noel Coons documentary like at least. 30 times like i'm not exaggerating i've watched how long it, is it like 45 50 minutes like <laughs> you've watched it all the way through each time it's feature length yes, <laughs> no, fuck yes. yeah i show it to everyone who will watch it wait was like, this the one where he like won a contest like yes it's okay called, i didn't see it i heard it's about called it. the mind probably because we were obsessed with it for like two years it's great <laughs> it's dude probably. it's amazing it's genuinely it was like, amazing wasn't it florida states or something yes like that? yes he hey Noel's been around a long ass time. Like props, like it's just so introspective and deep. Like it could be a real documentary, you know, oh, like, shit. about someone's life. Like, it talks about, like all that shit, like how long he's been around. Like it talks like they have footage of him starting in like two thousand six and seven and eight. And he like recounts he's like I was in band for all these years. So, and, okay. Like, I did really bad. And then my brother came in like before I came, they were world champion. And I came in the best we could do was second place or third place. And then my little brother came in. They were again, world champions yep. three times in a row. So or some shit. Let's like, talk about small you- fucking world. <laughs> I mentioned I did band shit. He did the same shit. Like we were oh, in right. dating yeah. together. Okay. Like, and, and it's weird. Years like I'd start yo-yoing. I was in a different group, but like he was there and he had some speaking part. And I remembered this short, I don't know, like short. He was speaking during yes, the. There was a part of the performance where he had to speak. He played snare 
And uh, what did he say? Was I it don't just remember. Poetry? It was just like something in a show. I don't poetry know. Poetry and it's, prose. It's by about. Noel it's, I know. It's about artistic performance. I, I don't know. It's it's band shit. What year is this? It must have been I before I graduated, like 2005, 2004. It's a long time ago. Yeah. So like he was at band. We were both doing band activities. We both yo-yoed, but just we didn't actually know Just saying artistic each other. performance is so yo-yo derivative. I'm like, was that like, was he trying to do? Because he was that guy that yep. proposed to his wife during AP and stuff. Props, and like, dude. Like, I yeah, had the balls dude. to do that. He talks about that during the documentary. He's just like, <laughs> it's so fun. Like, he talks shit on the people. Like, I think they got third or something that yeah. year. Which is like amazing to be able to be like, oh, yeah. someone was judging my engagement and like me and my wife were competing. And it's like, it's like an amazing story, you know? But like, he talks shit on the other team. He's like, you know, and he's like dead serious. He like does this weird thing like makes eye contact with the camera and like the cameraman and then like veers off so you could tell he's like thought about this introspectively so much like you know just second place didn't wasn't as clean as us so like i don't maybe we should have got second but like whatever you know props to them and it's just like yo like this guy is like you are like selling me on this documentary so much you are really into it dude it's one of my few passions oh my god very few things bring me joy in life what is it how good is it? I've only seen parts. You know, I, when it is posted up, I'm hosting. You know, I got 13 people to take care uh, of to worry about. It's you know. such a great uh, viewpoint into the the human like existence. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> this is so serious, dude. It's great. I I've sociologically broke this down mentally <laughs> so many times where it's just like. Everything that I love that documentary. Dude, so much. Reset should have sponsored it. You should have gave money. If if the next time Worlds in America, I will do a showing of it. <laughs> I will sponsor. Like I'll have Noel come and give a, a lecture about it. I'll have his kid there. Like I'll give him a certificate. <laughs> Whatever the fuck we can do. Like it'll be amazing. I I Sam, I'm not exact. I've seriously watched it at least thirty to fifty times. <laughs> like, but it's it's. It's bad. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's really bad, but it's so... It's not bad. Like, someone worked very hard on it, and Noel, like, genuinely cares about everything yeah. that's happening in it. So, like, that makes it really good oh and heartfelt, God. you know? And, like, just everything... Like, from the start to the beginning, it's so good. I love it so much. It's a piece of... I love it. Like, it's yo-yo lore, like... I Is it better even, than, like, Save Death Volume 1? Oh, it's... Oh, it's... Okay. Oh, shit. It, it this could be like you could show this to a party of people that like loosely knew about what yo-yoing was and they would be entertained like they would just can you like get him on the show i want to talk about you should do <laughs> like hold on Walker? you should do like uh, the director's commentary like you should go oh, and like man. hang out with him and talk about the scenes i want to do a full like i want to watch the whole thing and then react to it like just yeah, do a whole reaction to it yeah cuz it's so good like you're passionate about this like you are you are serious. Right. Like, I wish that I could joke about, like, you're not bullshitting me. This is no, great. Like, it's, but, like I said, it's just, like, so. It's like when you see, like, one of your relatives that takes, like, quilting really seriously or, like, scrapbooking, and it's just, like, <laughs> you know that they're not, like, doing some shit that's going to be in the Smithsonian, but it's, like, they put so much effort and, like, thought into this that it's, like, yo like this is some shit like so and like they they put as much effort into it like they thought a million people were gonna see this shit real talk like they go about this well, as 30 if, of them were you <laughs> <laughs> i'm not lying like it's that's what there's uh fuck there is this band it's called uh this is a crazy story i'm gonna fucking digress so much right now it's called it's these three chicks from like i think they're from west virginia somewhere they're called the shags <laughs> And it's called outsider, outsider music. It's like, and they've never, they were raised by like a dad who was in this religious cult and he never let them hear music and then just gave them instruments one day. and was like, we're going to go record an album and they record an album and like, it sounds like trash and it's awful, but like their dad was like borderline abusive trying to get them to record this album. So like, it just sounds like they're 
fucking playing their hearts out and they're trying very serious but it's so bad you know what i mean <laughs> and like the documentary like it's like i said they put so much effort into it yeah. but it's just like it's obviously like someone's project for like their communications clash you know <laughs> like it's so good but it's just like so much effort put into it that it's like it's a masterpiece like it's it's great dude you sold me like sold me on it. that's i'm glad that i told you about it because that's such a great idea like every time you sponsor a contest they always give you like uh like uh you get 10 to 10 oh. minutes of stage time or whatever like if world's in cleveland again or wherever the fuck it is like i could definitely get a parlor for the Can night you get yeah. him in there with this kid that'd be great oh my god i would fly him out dude <laughs> i would raise the money i'd dude, fly him he, out and he's like making a living on a hustle like i got fly respect, his family dude. out he worked at that duncan card they talk about that they in the worked at a duncan yeah. card uh he's doing performances now i think he's I like in he's like doing. seven bands like respect jesus like, christ yeah he's yeah great. like respect dude um but he was at the duncan card i went to the duncan card like the last couple weeks it was open i don't know randomly went to orlando for that when i took a picture at the rosen <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I didn't know anybody at the Duncan booth. It was like yeah. random people, and I was like, "Who the fuck are these people? I want to see like Sean be giggling and laugh and touch his cheeks." And, <laughs> and that sounds really like, it but it, it is what it, everybody what does it. Candy by a grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there, and I was disappointed. Uh, Brian showed up for a little bit and like gave me some stuff and then left. But yeah. It was crazy. Like that booth was like open and then closed the next day. And speaking of the other companies closing, uh, yeah, 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 nation. When that closed, people stole all the shit. Anyways, I'm like diving into Deep like the, no, no. the the I underbelly of the yo-yo world. Go on to something else. I was like, damn, we're about to go into another no, level of yo-yo. Not gonna nation. air Pat's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it was just unfortunate. It was that. unfortunate. You're yeah, right. It was well, unfortunate. Let's leave it as that. I wasn't on the yo store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the first one I came up on the Yo store. Isn't that funny? I was on Yo-Yo Nation and uh, Yo-Yoing.com too, but Yo-Yoing.com was like the big leagues, you know? Like everyone posted on there. Yeah. Like Kyle Weems on there. All the Sector Y stuff was like right. double posted on there. But I only liked Yo-Yoing.com because it was simple and easy. It was just like one forum. It wasn't like, so like, yo, like oh God, Yo so Expert funny, or like, Dark Man. Like the sub forum for this five eight and stuff. I'm like I don't know where to fucking post. I'm old school. <laughs> like I post in one spot. I'm an old. I was like the opposite. Where like I learned the interface on Yo Yo Nation and the Yo, oh, where it's it. super difficult. You know yeah. what I mean? So like Yo Yoing was almost intimidating to me. Where I was like, you only just type into this box. And it's all <laughs> on the same page. That's it. Like what the fuck is this all about? And it's like that's what a message board is. <laughs> like this is what a traditional yeah. forum is formatted like you know what i mean to the nation forums i was just like in this weird middle period of like 2005 to 2010 internet that is just like because <laughs> you were when did you start i actually don't know your like when you started 2000 i mean like i was yo-yoing in like 98 99 but then i wasn't i got my first unresponsive yo 2005 like summer 2005 so i guess you missed the wanting to learn on ken's world on a string is that site still up by the way it is. I'm maybe I don't know. Um, I definitely learned like when that was one of the first yo websites when I was a kid. I definitely knew that it existed and tried to go on, but like the diagrams are so hard to learn. Oh, they're terrible, aren't kid. they? Yeah, even they're now, terrible. like the only reason I can surmise what's going. On, Jamie, can you look that up? <laughs> Who was Who paying for this domain? Who this? Oh, it's in Canada. Oh, never mind. Is Ken uh, Chinese? <laughs> I feel Ken? like I, for some reason, I feel like I've met him before. Yeah, yeah, tricks. Can we figure out who owns this domain? <laughs> Wait, is that is it still up? Yeah, dude, look at There's that. No that fucking, link would not. Holy be. shit! Look at the, it's amazing. You know, Jason Lee has a Ken's World of String tattoo, right? On his ass cheek. It's okay. that. It's well, that explain. It's it would the, explain the why four I didn't color know gift this. just on his <laughs> ass. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. fucking spectacular. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Can you not even watch them? Will it pop up in a new tab? Who's hosting this? No. Oh, it's, it automatically <gasps> saved it. Wow. <gasps> you know how long it would take me to download Holy one of those videos? Holy shit. Ken's Chinese. Wow, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow, so like super hard tricks must have been fucking impossible. To dude, see. yeah. I this think is have, what we learned on that. They have dude. like kamikaze and like pink hippo 
Velvet Rolls is so... Di- do they even have regular breakdowns of it? Oh <laughs> no, my it's... god! <laughs> Did you like the transition? Is this triple A? Wow. This is amazing. We're watching some very old, very poor resolution. This isn't even 240p. This is... This is like, no. <laughs> like dial-up plus. But I guarantee... It doesn't look horrible that Holy small. shit, he actually hit that with responsive-ass, <clears throat> yeah. like, tiny Slim, yo-yos. Slim. MVP. MVP. I would have downloaded that back in the day and watched it on my iPod video and been like, yeah. God, this quality is so good. It <laughs> took, I, okay, so I would like, I need to learn a trick, so I would just download it, but it would take me overnight to download it, so I'd start it at night and wake up the next day and have a video to watch. I'd compress that bit fucking, to an MP4. Like, oh, dude. Watch it and be brick the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, do you see Jason yo-yoing in California? And he's, it's crazy. Dude, it it doesn't look horrible that big, you know what I mean? It's not that bad. Try and learn from it, Tyler. Like, come on. You you made it work back in the day, you know what I mean? We had to mod the yo-yos we were playing so, with. So no one we would watch that and be like, thank God at least someone posted a video, you know? <laughs> He's right. My favorite part about that is, is like the reason why I didn't download the videos, like A, it took so long, but B, like it was such hard quality. I was like, I'm better off learning from the pictures of the dude. Hands. At the time, yeah, that's yeah. so funny. Jesus Christ! All I right. can't believe you didn't know that it exi- existed. The videos? Yeah, or... I can't believe you didn't know there was videos. I've never mm-hmm. seen those in my whole life. Those Is are he great, still? Though. I want to know if he's still around now. You mean like alive? <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> well, he's got to be old by now, right? Yeah, those he videos. Didn't, he didn't look young those in the are video. Probably like 20 years old, yeah, which is crazy to think about. Right now. He might have been 30 in those videos. I think he was 30 imagine in if videos. he was 50. Oh, <laughs> imagine if Ken was 50. <laughs> Could you imagine beating him in real life and being like, I'm gonna name my kid Ken. <laughs> You're the <laughs> fucking hands, dude. You're the hands. You know how many people you taught to yo-yo, man? He He's, probably has no idea. He's probably just no. like who I, even knows? It's if, a Canadian URL, so I wonder I what Oh my god. <laughs> Could you imagine if you're like the only person who's viewed that website in like the past like 10 years? You're pulling a fucking list. He's like, we got three downloads yesterday. At 45,000. Well, yeah, who's like, hosting it? Shit. Because they're hosting all the video files. Uncompressed image. Like, could you imagine the hosting calls? Like, I mean, do you know how big those files yeah, are? Yeah, it's gotta be I mean, 20 right megs right or right something. Now. But there's hundreds of them on that website. There's still some pittance for the storage, whatever it is. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We're good. <laughs> Kilobytes for a video. We he got could, to the fucking moon on less, could, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he could have reposted all these on YouTube. Could you imagine the gold? Like the gold mine he'd have? Dude, that's why yo tricks exist. You know that yo yo saw yo tricks, right? Yeah. And like how popular they are now yeah. and shit. Like, I don't know how much of that is by design, but like they were one of the first people posting yo tutorials on YouTube, and now like that's kind of why they are who they are. And like you like you were talking about random yo yo players are now going viral, but it's yeah. like they have an organic fan base. Like all these yeah. other like Angelo and all these people, like they have an amazing fan base and like they have a lot of active members, but like when they go to post a regular video, it doesn't get nearly the same interaction that a regular like the yo tricks does. Like Do you think Ken is like, fuck, I was this two decades too early? No, <laughs> yeah. no, not at all. He's like, I could I could have made it on YouTube as Ken's as, probably I like bought. a he's probably a programmer, like something he has no idea. Like yo yo is probably truly a side hobby and he's like, Oh, this would be cool to put we on should, the internet. We should ask the viewers like who knows Ken? Like, yeah, please. Ken? This who is knows inspiring Ken? me to reach out to him because, like, I feel like Jason probably reached out to him back in the day or something. Like you said, I'm curious who's paying for that hosting. Not like it costs anything, but it's not like it's free either, you know? And it's been up for decades. Right. At this every point. couple years, I got to re up. Like. And it has not changed one bit. <laughs> Sam, thank you so much for coming on. Um,. Is there anything else you want to say? Dude, no, thanks <laughs> for having me. Like, we've had a hell of a conversation. Yeah, I can't wait to upload this, I hope. It's funny, because whenever I put stuff up like this, I'm always like, oh, no one's really going to care about it. Like, it's so personal, or like, not, I don't want to use intimate, but like, it's personal, the stories that we tell, you know what I mean? And then to hear other people are like, yo, it's so cool listening to everyone reminisce about yo-yo stuff, and hearing everyone, and how it was back in the day. And... Yeah, dude, it's... I, I have to admit, like... Would I be sitting on a couch talking to like you dudes like about this shit? Like, no, I guess yo-yoing is some weird random shit that we're like, yeah, let's all do it, and it's life changing at least from like my perspective. Not to like get 
you know, like real about it, but like it's oh, man, definitely for sure. like for you, like I mean, your whole career is based on it, your hustle's based on it. I mean, I met Charles, I've been over here countless times, like to say that the friendship has been there for decade now like, decades like no, that's crazy not many From people a, our age have exactly. friends that they can say it about and that they have this much in common yeah with, and you like know? like like you hit me up like literally yesterday I was like hey you want to come do this and i'm like why not like, right i'll be there yeah exactly like, why not like like it, you have even friends that you're like the best of friends with right now like 24 yeah. hours no like you can still get together with them but it's like you know it's just not the same like yeah. it's wild yeah yoyoing really brings all those people together so, and and I'm not sure, know. like, if that's been talked about on here, but, like, yeah, dude, like, it's life-changing, like, we've made lifelong friends, we've made lifelong bad decisions, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely more than just I'm a I'm glad toy. you said that, man. That's a good one. Yeah, I always make sure to frame it so people view it. Th- like, even if it's younger kids that don't really look at yo-yoing, like, it's given them this, like, whole different spectrum on life, because, yeah. like... So many younger kids don't realize, like, how good they have it. And then, mm-hmm. not just in general, but, like, in, in general, yes. But, like, in yo-yoing especially, you know what I mean? And they get older and it's, like, the, it. the future hits you so hard. Because, yep. like, not many kids our age, even when they're 16, have that much dope. Like, you have your regular friend sets, whatever. Yep. And, like, you have your regular friend things in common with them. But yo-yo is one of those things. It's like being married to someone, yep. having that much in common with them or doing that much with them. What were you going to say, Chuck? Or... Sorry. What's... Who's? I, I mean, I could go to any. Like I said before, any state in, right, like in America, gonna and I'm gonna homies. have. I'm gonna know somebody like Brad Collins. I hung out with him, randomly drink with him in Indianapolis on a work trip. I'm going to Jersey in August, and I'm gonna hit one of you guys up, right, or somebody yeah. around the area, because I'm going up there for work. Tons. I'm of just gonna see people there. up yeah. there. So like, yeah, it's just lifelong, life changing. I mean, you do a hustle on it, and you're doing all kinds of crazy shit. It's blowing up on like all kinds of random stuff now. So. That's really gratifying to see as someone who's worked in it for so long. It is like, you know, I've always known it's had this potential. And, like, I'm glad to see yeah. the younger kids utilizing it. And, like, real talk, like, you don't know this about me. I love flexing on everyone else about this. Like, Hunter, Hunter Fierstein, one of those mm-hmm. kids is blowing up on stuff. I taught him how to yo-yo. He came Shit, to one okay. of my yo-yo classes in Phoenix. Like, he did not a yo-yo. He could solve a, he was six years old. He could solve a Rubik's Cube in, like, 30 seconds. And I was like, dude, you'd be, He'd be great at incredible at yo-yoing, right? And, like, literally, I taught him 15, 20 tricks, and, like, he was off to the races. Like, he was learning everything he could. And, like, his older brother, Tanner, I was, like, he was, like, 15 or 16 at the time. I was, like, this is the kid who's going to stick with it. He's a lifelong yo-yo kid. I was, like, every time at Yo-Yo Club, I'm, like, teaching his brother Tanner tricks. I'm, like, oh, Tanner's really going to be interested. And, like, meanwhile, Hunter's learning, like, 3A and 4A and, like, getting like tyler i'm trying to compete his mom's like paying me for private lessons and stuff like the other day tanner finished uh his phd for like veterinary studies so he's literally an emergency vet tech now that makes me feel so old like knowing God this kid damn. was 16 i was teaching him how to yo and now he's a fucking doctor it's Everybody's like he's graduated that's wild and then that girl uh betty Gallagos, mm-hmm. she's from mexico city i taught her how to yo-yo too isn't that so wild? Dude, so like, and they are like blowing one of the up. biggest ones, and like I'm directly responsible for that. I never like, well, and and it's helping you in a weird way too because like it's kids all are gonna, indirect. It's all cyclical, you know. What because I mean? like you're gonna get kids. It's all the same say, eating its own same yep. snake eating its own asshole. <laughs> like you're gonna get money from this because some kid on the streets gonna be like, oh, I, I'd like to learn how to yell. Right, dude. Yeah. I saw this kid on Instagram or TikTok or whatever the exactly. fuck they're on. Like it's gonna help you out. So yeah, dude. Like. I, I'm everybody's had a hustle. Like I'm, I'm really impressed. So I'm, I'm really impressed with you. Like Thanks, how much man. you've done it. So like I, have lots of respect. Likewise, likewise. So, yeah. Thanks everyone so much for watching. <laughs> everyone looked forward. Like I was talking to <laughs> a real audience. Like, like who's like, here? Oh shit, Tyler. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, check us out next time on the goods. You know this this uh, crazy schedule that I have that I never release episodes, but uh, <laughs> just random. Yeah. I, I wonder how long this episode is. It'll probably be bordering like three hours. Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Peace. Like subscribe. Peace. <laughs>